going to call a meeting to order. I'm going to call a meeting to order at uh, 5.05. Um, we have the select board. We have uh, Dorinda, our treasurer. We have Elias, Mark, Vic, Randy, Mary Kay. Hi. Uh, Bill McManus. Uh, and Rick. Theo Kennedy, and who is LG Stylo for? Please identify yourself. So, what do you think? Should we zap them if they won't identify themselves? I don't think you can do that, Peter. Well, you can, can't you, Sarah? I can see it. I Where is it? I can, but you know, it's it may be somebody who's uh, just. I mean, I think they are allowed to attend without having to identify themselves. It's a top right uh, of the second I, page. I see him. Yeah. I thought you oh, had no, you to put. I thought you had to put in the minute who was at the meeting. You'll have to put the minutes who participates in the meeting. Well, if somebody's attending the meeting, they're participating, right? Well, what do you want me to do? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking the select board what they think. I don't know, but I think anybody should at least identify themselves if they're going to be part of our meeting. Well, why don't I send them a message? See if that yeah. works. That would be yes. fun. That's a good idea. Maybe they don't realize, you know, their uh, their their mic is turned off. Maybe that's the, oh, that's Orca. Oh. Yeah, who knows. I don't think they know how to use the phone. Well, I'm not getting anything. I texted them. I don't know. Do you want me to put them in the waiting room? What do you think, board members? No, what I'm saying is that it's possible that someone like Mary Kay called in on her phone and it shows up as two things. Because you know how you have to like do Wi-Fi or you have to call in? That wasn't you, no, Mary, Mary Kay. Mary Kay's saying no. Was saying it you, Mary? No. I, I can tell you somebody was in the office today asking how to set up Zoom and that was the phone that was being used. Okay, perfect. Then I say we let the person stay on. And you can't tell us who that is, Dorinda? I already did one. You did tell us. It's Jay Flies, Files. Okay. Jay Files. Member okay. of our road crew. All okay. right. But guys, I've got to I've got to mute myself for just a second here. We've got a little uh my neighbor just hit a deer and I need to talk to him. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. Only in Vermont. <laughs> Only in Vermont. I'll be right back. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> Uh, which neighbor? <laughs> Everybody have their winter tires on? Yep. Not me. <laughs> Who's not me? Bill McManus. Well, there you go, Bill. One on one car and one not on the other. I got the tires, but I haven't got it mounted yet. I just got mine on today. It was perfect timing. Hmm. Well, do you want me to start running the meeting uh, while we're waiting for Peter? Or do you want to wait for Peter? Just give him a minute. Come on, After Peter. all, this is deer hunting in Vermont. 
Right. And I thought hunting from the road was illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Randy, ask him if it's a buck and where it is, and you can go over and tag it. That's right. <laughs> Can't hear you, Peter. Oh, but no, you can now. My neighbor, my neighbor just bashed into a deer on the interstate in Bethel, headed to Boston. They're pulled off to the side of the road. They've called the state police. They say they can't come for at least an hour. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. They're going to have to figure out their own problem. I can't, I can't help them. Um, I told them I'd come down at seven o'clock and rescue them, but I can't do it now. So anyway, I apologize for that. So uh, we've called the meeting to order. Uh, we uh, have welcomed guests. Are there any amendments to the agenda? Liz, you have one amendment, correct? Yeah, just under other business to talk about um, the capital spending plan. Okay, thank you. Any other amendments? Liz, isn't there a meeting on, on the, uh, Thursday about that? Yes, there is. And that's what I need to talk to you guys about. There's a piece of the meeting that I need to discuss with you before I do that meeting. I'm going to have something else under the treasurer's report, but nothing big. Okay. Thank you, Dorinda. So with that, we will go into our uh, budget workshop, um, reviewing FY23 budget proposals for town administration, including Lister zoning, as well as conservation commission, planning commission, recreation department, and cemetery. In addition, the board will review Blue Cross Blue Shield plans for 2022 calendar year, action possible. If necessary, approving all mid-year pay raise and other compensation via motion action possible. So, so there's, there's a question, uh, Liz, in the, in the minutes, which Sarah produced, she didn't think we made a motion on the pay raises. And I thought we did. Is that not the case? I thought Phil made the motion and I'm not sure who seconded it, but Phil, I thought yeah, made it. And I, I, think so, I believe yeah. I seconded that. Yeah. You okay. seconded it? Okay. And we, and we uh, approved it unanimously. So we need to add that to the minutes, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So with that, budget workshop. You. On first, uh, Sarah or Dorinda? Well, <laughs> I mean, I'll, I left a lot of places blank on this because uh, as far as uh, the town go, the town funds, because I wasn't sure what you wanted to do or some of the information we have not received yet. Yep. Um, and we have not, we sent a message out to the cemetery commission and we did not hear back from them. So I don't know how you want to handle that one. Um, and um, I think there's a lot here to discuss and you're certainly not going to do it in 20 minutes. So you might want to choose your battle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> What does that mean? You go to the other stuff and then come back to this? No, I'm saying that I don't think you can accomplish all the things listed, the health insurance, the, the empty slots on here. Um, so I think you're gonna have to do, you know, pick what areas you wanna concentrate on and go from there. Well, let's, uh, here's, here's what I would suggest. Um, let's, let's review what numbers we have in general government and administration and understand what decisions we need to make. And at the same time, I think we can, I think we are where we are on the health insurance for this, what is for this upcoming year. So I'm not sure review of plans. I mean, that would be appropriate for next September, not now, I believe. Am I not correct on that, Dorinda? 
Uh, well, yeah, we have to make a decision um, as far as if we're going to stay with Blue Cross. And I think if you want to explore other options, you're not going to be able to um, make that decision this quickly, get the information you need and make any changes. I, yeah, I mean, I, that was that was my sense at the last meeting that it was already too late to do that this year. In terms of, yeah, Mark. Just a clarifying question for the 2022-23 budget. Is there a goal in mind for the budget increase? Is it to be a flat budget, a slight increase? Was there, is there any thinking behind that? Um, we have not gotten to that to that point yet but based on what we know already and what we've heard i'd say it's going to be a pretty good increase it's not going to be flat that's for sure and with with that in mind we're going to be looking for opportunities to save where we can find them because we already know and you already know some of the areas where we're where we're mm -hmm. spending more money but no we have not Last last year we were shooting to keep it at five percent or below, but we have not done that this year. Okay, thank Mostly you. Because we just have too many outstanding too many parts and too much yep. stuff going on to be able to do that at this point in time. Mm -hmm. As we as we firm up these numbers and move forward and start to see what the increase really looks like, then we'll be able to make decisions. Okay, thanks for that. Right now, right now we're more or less accepting accepting information. We're not. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not adjusting anything at this point in time. Does that okay. Make sense? It does. Thanks. So basically the wages and all the offsetting taxes are populated based on the numbers you agreed to last week. There's no percentages in there for any type of increase. So those are just plug numbers for right now. Um, <laughs> But they're plug numbers based on our interim increases. Yes, correct. Okay. Um, any insurances related to property and casualty or liability, anything like that, we have not received those numbers yet. So we can just start. We don't have county tax information, anything like that. So we can, you know, start right at the top and go down and plug in numbers if you want to. Um, you know, do that. I mean, there's some things you'll see, like when we get to town email, we had never budgeted a number last year because that was something we implemented um, in turn, midterm, and it was originally falling under computer maintenance. Right. So when we get to computer maintenance, you'll see that's higher than what we budgeted for. So um, well, I guess... You can drive just which is which is what we've done in the past is put in last year's numbers and gray it out or highlight it or put an asterisk after it so we know it's last year's numbers. Okay. Well we can we can do that as we go along, but the first one to come to is advertising and printing. We budgeted five hundred the year before it came in at thirteen thirty five. So do you really want to plug in a $500 number? And I don't, you know, without knowing if our printing is going to be up for certain things. I mean, somehow we have to, somehow we have to talk about it, but I'm just, I'm just trying to get at some baseline so we can move forward. So without all these numbers, yes. you, don't even make any sense at all to me. Well, I can fly through them really quickly if you want to just, I mean, the first one, I didn't know how you wanted to adjust for that, you know, do you want okay. to level well, fund? Well, let's. Is that what you want to do is level fund everything? No, I... no, 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 no. No. I'm just saying the numbers that we don't know or that we're waiting to get information, we should, uh, we should put in some kind of plug number just to, just to start the process. That's right, and I do, I so do like the have that in there. Okay. Well. On some of them. So I'll just plug in the 8538 on the property and casualty. Yep. All right. Now advertising and printing. Put in a thousand. 
Wait a minute. What, why was it? Why was it all of a sudden thirteen hundred dollars, Sarah? Do you? Was there some reason it jumped way up? I advertising and printing for. Uh, are we talking about the current fiscal year that we're right now? We're talking about what it came in we, from the year before. Well, I would and, assume from the year before is because we were doing uh, so much for the. Uh, for the 2020 election, is that right? Weren't we sitting out postcards and- I think uh, so. And we I recouped so, a lot yeah. of those costs, but I think that there was a, as I recall, that was a heavy printing year. But we've also done a lot of advertising for hearings and I think that right. even comes in below though. That's a different number. This is general advertising. Oh. Did we have a different person for the town um, uh, book too, the annual report? No, it was all, it's still jet service. And they, I think their fees have been pretty flat for the past couple of years. And that's on a different line item for the town yeah, report. Flat. Let's just put in a thousand dollars. Okay, yeah, let's go. Right. That's yeah. what I said, yep. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, is the select board gonna yeah. take any courses? We always put in 200 and never use it. I'd leave it. I'd zero I'd it leave out. It there. No, zero it out. If we if we use it, if we spend it, we spend it. We haven't. I don't think we've spent it in four years. Well, but That's it's nice to have a little extra money. Yeah, but well, I think he'll let us take a course if we want to. Yes. <clears throat> he'll take it okay. from his slush fund. Peter. Welch Park has nothing. There's got to be some money on that. We got to get that done. All right, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's let's go. What are we going to plug in for the town email? Where is the town email? I don't even see it. Thirteen. I don't know. What? Is, how much does it cost? So seven ten was in there. Where did that number come? That was that was what we spent in twenty twenty one. Okay. And I think we're paying. Um, it's like three dollars an email or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Or something to that effect. I think it's up around a hundred hundred dollars a month or so. So you're looking at probably oh. twelve hundred dollars. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, because there's there's also the um you know the spam filter and virus protection and, and that stuff. So yeah, probably a thousand a thousand to twelve hundred is a much more reasonable number. Okay, I'll put in a thousand. Okay. All right. Town, town, town property maintenance. We only already have 150 in there for mowing the town properties that was submitted by um, Mitch. And there's other, we usually put money in there for other things like painting the town hall or whatever we do. So I didn't know how much you wanted to add to that 150. You mean 25? 2500. 2, right, but well, no, we've is 150 for mowing town property from um, that what came. Oh, from, that goes in there. That will go in there. That's off to the side, okay. and then whatever else, if there's anything else for town maintenance, I think. Um, there were some extra fees in there at one time we thought we were going to have for something. But again, the year before, we only spent 50 bucks, just about, and we put in 2,500 for some reason last year. Well, wasn't that because we were going to be continuing painting like on the, we've been doing painting on the, on the town buildings every year, haven't we? We didn't do any this year. Yeah. yeah, I think that's right. Yes. And, we need to get, and we need to get back to that. Let's leave it. Yeah. yeah. Well, when, right now it's got zero. So when you say let's leave it, are you saying leave it, leave it at 2,500? 2, 2, yep. Put okay. 500. That gives us a couple thousand plus a little bit beyond yeah. knowing for painting. And discretionary fund that always shows like we don't use it, but what happens is when we do say take it out of the discretionary fund, we put the actual expense to the category that it falls in. So 
if you're going to use your discretionary fund to say paint the town hall or something, then it would go under town hall expense and not under the discretionary fund. So how do we, how do we deal with that? So we see when we've used our discretionary fund or anything. We would have to go forward and make adjusting journal entries as it's used and move funds from one account to the other. Just well, something you know, all up. Take, the it from the, take it from the discretionary account and put it in the fund balance or put it into yeah. the line item for in, yeah. we would reduce yeah. the expense by that amount. Okay. Well, I guess I mean somehow we need to be doing that because I agree. We there are always three or four things every year where we say we'll take it out of the discretionary, but it never it never vanishes and then we can't remember what we used it for. But our but our auditor says what we're doing now, okay, or is that not so, Dorinda? We're fine. We're not doing anything we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're showing the true expenses of what we spent things on, so they're not concerned. It's more or less extra money you put into the budget for unforeseen circumstances. Well, it's it's extra money. Yeah, we put in the budget and then we raise it with our property taxes. Right, we but raise money to cover it. Leave it at eight thousand, though. Okay. And I would recommend our share of Welch Park shouldn't be any more than five hundred dollars. I wouldn't think, as a guess. That's what I put in. Yeah. So I would leave it at five hundred. Uh, yeah. Legal fees. Who knows? They have been extraordinarily high. I would put in twenty five hundred. Oh, I think we need to put in more than that. I, I, I mean, if this, uh, if this appeal goes forward again, that alone could be twenty five hundred dollars. Five thousand. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I literally have, I literally have no idea. But it doesn't feel to me like it's enough. No, I agree. What? Thousand or twenty hundred? How about three thousand? How about three thousand? Three thousand. Okay. I just saying go up. Huh? Well, we've got that Bowden appeal uh, from the VCA that's in that's been kind of uh, deferred while it while the courts are deal with their backlog. But I have the feeling that's going to speed up uh, next summer. So I just expect there there could be some legal expenses there. Well. I agree. Town report. Uh, Town report's in there. We've got yeah. numbers for that. Yeah. Okay. The league, we don't have any dues fees yet, so I'll just plug in last year's number. Yeah. County yeah. tax, we don't have. I'll plug in last year's number. Yeah. Central Vermont solid waste, we don't have that. Yeah. Um, the next two items we do have, um, we estimated elections. I talked to Sarah about that and we estimated it probably a couple thousand dollars. Um, miscellaneous expense, we just throw a five, we've been throwing 500 in there um, just in case something isn't captured somewhere else. What does that cost? Um, What's the miscellaneous? Anything that doesn't have a category. Okay. As you can see, it was $85 the year before. Um, the capital plan, somehow this was, um, we put it in as a line item last year and for $900. Um, we should, the, our biggest problem is we enter into a lot of grant agreements partway through the year. Um, right. And we don't necessarily spend that money in that year. Like we might get it in, but then we don't, we don't actually expend it and able to collect on it until the following year. So this one's, these are really hard to capture. Um, well, I just think based on our past experience, we need to put some kind of a plug number in there, a thousand dollars or something. And just it's call it like grant matches. grants all the time. Yeah, grant right. matches. We'll just change the line item to grant matches and plug in a number. Yeah. Yep. Okay. 
And how much would you like to do that for? What do you think? A thousand? That's what you said. Yeah. Yeah. Not much, but at least it's something. Would yeah, Would yeah. it be easy enough to to gather information on what we've done for the past three years or something and pull an average in? I mean, is that easily accessible? Of what everything we spent in matches? Yeah, for, you know, look back at the last three years and just plug the average for the last three years into that line item. I'll it have to like, see what we... It, it felt have like to that was a pretty big number for... I'll look for it. My only comment is it seems like it's more and more all the time. It is. Tax abatements. That is those small write-offs, like if somebody, you know, mm -hmm. they kind of paid in between and were off by 50 cents or a dollar or, you know, something like that. We write I off just, these small I just amounts. leave that at zero. I mean, the highest mm -hmm. that's ever been has been a few hundred dollars, like less than yeah. $500. Yeah. What about the COVID-19? You skipped that one. Line 27. Right. I I mean, I don't know if we want to, again, um, put anything. That was an, um, a surprise to everybody. So it just, those were expenses we occur, incurred. And we were separating them only because we thought we could get reimbursed for them. Yeah. I think you're still going to have some residual um, monies that will be spent on that, at least for the short term. But I also think we may be able to recover that money from our ARPA funds, right? That's what I was going to say, mm -hmm. yeah. So I would, but, just, I would just leave it at zero and understand that, I mean, I'm, I'm open. We can go back and recapture the money we've already spent. I think they already told us we can't go backwards. Well, well what, whatever. we can certainly go forward. So right. fine items. So we so we've already measured it when it comes to ARPA money. We've got it all done already. Yeah, but I'm just saying don't budget it because we expect it to be zeroed out. If we expend money, we should put it in that line item as an expense, but we shouldn't budget it because we expect to recover it from ARPA and zero it out at the year end of the year. Well, if we you're not it, eligible. It were has to be eligible, number one. I'm sorry, go ahead. Were we not eligible for PPP as a municipality? We didn't apply, so I don't know if we were, I don't think we ever had that discussion. Because that would have paid for, I think, some of those things, the supplies and all that. Well, that's, that's history at this point in time, but if we, my, under, my understanding is that COVID-related expense, you know, again, it's still very unclear to me what we can apply for or not, but I don't anticipate it's going to be a big expense, and I'm hoping that we can take it out of our ARPA funds. And if you guys think we should plug a small number in there, I'm fine doing it, but I don't anticipate any additional changes to our, to our office space, and I can't imagine we're going to spend much on supplies at this point in time, but I don't know. Is is some of the language in that um, prevent you from using the ARPA money if it's a budgeted line item? If I recall, there's some requirements in there that if you have a have it in a budget uh, at all, you it's not ARPA eligible. So it would it would be beneficial to leave it out. Yep. Randy's right. Yeah. Okay. I say leave it out. Yeah. Well, any expenses anyways would go under the ARPA expenses and not that line item if we were right. trying to get anything back. Right. So, okay. So we can skip down under administration. We can skip right to office supplies. What um, line? A line 41. It's line 41, yeah. Peter. And Wait a minute. Yes, Steve. Um, <clears throat> I was just, our, our schedule says that we're going to be reviewing the uh, fire department uh, budget proposals 
so we're still in the budget stuff, but can't we just go to that so that these guys can uh, get that in there? Well, I was I was hoping we could. I, I think very quickly we could zip down to the bottom of this first page and then get to them. Okay. Then, in the next four or five minutes. Yeah. If if we can't, we'll pause. I don't I don't want to keep them. Uh, I don't want to keep them waiting either, Steve. Okay. We don't have just to get through the town administration. We don't have much. Um, okay. The only uh, office supplies, I think we might, if we're trying to save money, we probably can scale that back maybe. Um, Sarah, I don't know what your feeling is on that. I'll just shake the printer just cartridge. Why don't you put in what you, what you had for last year? I mean, if we have to scale back later in our budget, okay. that's when we can do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'd say 1500 because the price of stuff has gone up immensely. Mm. Well, we had 3000 in there. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would change the budget item. Yeah. So is it? Yeah. Stick with 3000 Yeah. I thought okay. we were going to just round up what we actually spent for last year. Do people think we should do 3000 Let's just put 1500 in and save 1500 1500 sounds reasonable to me. Okay. Um, equipment and repair, I'll keep the same. Equipment purchases, I don't know if there's anything that, again, this is a, you know, we need to talk about it. This wouldn't fall under the capital spending plan, but any kind of purchases. Um, the one thing I did read that one of the towns is buying systems to conduct their meetings remotely. They're buying these oh. OWL systems and yeah. TVs, yeah. And, it, and it's being covered under the ARPA money. Right. So that might be something, but again, that would be an ARPA expense. So I don't know how much equipment we really need to purchase. Well, I just always presume something's going to break, break or blow up, or mm. somebody's we'll laptop. We'll put in a thousand. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Yeah, um, the Lister computer, we did the upgrade on that, so that's going to be a zero. Yeah. Um, and then everything else, I kind of went through and from the Lister's budgets and all, and plugged those numbers in. I think you guys received a copy mm -hmm. of the list of budgets. Yep. Yep. So it. I plugged those numbers in. Um, the copier lease, I'll leave in that one we can do. Um, computer maintenance, that's the biggie. Um, that's where all of your RB technology bills fall under. Um, and just the contract alone based on the current amount we're paying i don't know if there's going to be an increase is eighty five hundred dollars but every single month we have seems to be we have overages 22k okay. well that's just a, yeah that's a little bit more than what we actually spent last year 10 percent yeah, that sounds good. Okay. 15.79%. Oh. All right. Um, so that takes care of that part. Do you want to skip to fire department or? Well, let's just shoot down through the town hall quickly. It looks like you've got okay. pretty good numbers in here. Then we can the go only to one, again, the only thing in here is building repairs. And then we always put $10,000 into the town hall building fund. And yeah. those are the only two I didn't fill in. I think you keep them the same. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, uh, Dorinda. Yeah. Thanks. That's round up to 2000 for the building repair. I'm sorry, Mary. 5000 We're Five just going to keep it. Oh, I, I thought we were when we say keep it, we were going to keep it at what we spent, not at what we. Okay. Well, keep the number, keep the number Storinda has put in there. Well, okay. For last year, five and 10. Yep. Okay. Got it. All right. Okay. Thank you. So we are now going to pause our general budget discussion and.
take a look at the fire department budget. Gentlemen. Good evening. Hi. How are you guys? Hi. We're good. Thank you for uh, waiting for us. We appreciate it. Not a problem. We all set? Yes. Okay. Um, so for the insurance for property and casualty and workers comp, I plugged in the same numbers as last year. We didn't have the uh, new rates yet. Yeah. Um, supplies, we went up $100 because we're buying more and more cleaning supplies. Um, equipment repair, we kept the same. Uh, equipment purchase, we kept the same. Uh, the telephone, we kept the same. Uh, fast squad, we kept the same. Uh, let's see, electricity. Actually, we we dropped it down a smidge um, just because uh, that was a little bit high. It seemed like we weren't reaching it. Uh, fuel and heat, uh, we br did bring that up because we heard rates were going up. Mm -hmm. Uh, building maintenance, we've kept the same. Uh, radio dispatch, uh, we haven't got the new numbers yet, so we kept that the same. You've got that now, Eric. It oh, did we get last, it? It was on the last bill that you received from oh, them. I probably, I probably overlooked it. That's okay, 28394 Okay, thank you. Yep. I must overlook that. No problem uh dues and training uh we did up that some just because we're spending more on training now um courses and seminars uh some of that is covered from the state so we dropped that some those courses uh forest warden we kept the same uh gas and diesel we did drop down because we just haven't been using that much um so this is this is the one that changed the most is stipends okay wait a minute. Can, uh, we just, can we just back up a minute to gas and diesel yeah because my understanding is and i've been i've been following this most mostly because of the road crew not because of you guys but you're potentially talking about a 50 percent increase in cost of diesel fuel right and gasoline and gasoline the same so i think you should bump that up yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I it's agree. A relatively small number because you don't use that much. That's the good yeah. news. But I, I think it's right. a to, I think it's a mistake to cut it back. So, I, I guess I'm suggesting put it up to maybe 1,200 or something like that. If that makes sense to everybody, we can do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Peter. Uh, yeah. Or Eric. One yes. other thing uh, uh, on your um, uh, courses and seminars, you dropped it down to 300. Yes. Um, do you think you're not going to use that? I mean, you guys have been going pretty good with training and stuff like that. Well, yeah. If you look up above, we have uh, training up there as well. So we kind of we kind of were. It was kind of uh, how you dual. want to call it. Yeah, it's dual dual. So we okay. We basically, just kind of we. Bumped one up, but brought the other one down. It's still so roughly the same. But you're just... comfortable with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Where were we? Stipends. Yeah. So with our new with our new program that we installed, um, we tried to take an average of what how many calls we have a year, uh, how many people roughly go to those calls. So far, what we've kept track with to try to come up with a number that's reasonable to cover what our $10 an hour uh, cost is now. And that's what we came up with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so how nope. much is it for Paul? Uh, 18,000. 18, okay. You know, and, it, and we'll have a better, better feel on it, you know, maybe end of this year and, and into next year of where it's actually going to be. But we tried to average everything to try to come up with a reasonable number on both ends. So what, 
So what was the what was the rate? What was the rate in 2021? Or you changed it mid-year, didn't you? Um we it was five dollars a call and we went to ten dollars an hour. Right. Right. So you you changed the whole system and you changed it in the middle of the year. So that twelve thousand number doesn't really represent the current actual cost. No. At the twelve hundred dollar number, and that was when Sorry. it was Sorry. it was Hello. changed during yeah. the current year, right? Yes. I believe, yeah. wasn't it, Eric? Yes, correct. Okay. Yes, and 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 we're we're also paying for um, meetings and trainings too, and work okay. sessions. Yeah. So so it's you know we're nope, trying to figure not. it out, and I guess we'll see where we end up, but. Yeah, Hopefully that's, that's a pretty thing. pretty close number, you know. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh, radio communications we kept the same at twelve hundred. Uh, we added uh, a line item here for turnout gear. Um, we figured uh roughly thirteen set sets of gear at the cost of uh, thirteen hundred dollars. Uh. Our plan is to try to offset that with uh, fundraising. Uh, we're going to send out a letter um, to the town people, uh, and we get. Uh, 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 help me out here. Raffle. Yeah, raffle. Yes, we have a raffle going too. So we we've got some things in the works to try to try to try to offset that as much as possible. That's great. Um, so the only question I have about that is, and I know we've talked about this in the past and I just can't, I'm, I apologize, I can't remember the discussion, mm -hmm. but um, is it possible, for instance, is all our turnout gear exactly the same age? No, right? Uh, there is, I think, a uh, majority of it is the same age. The a lot of the older stuff is still being used. That was you know in, right. Yeah. Well, I'm, all I'm wondering is, and believe me, I want everybody to be safe and I want them to have the right equipment and the right gear. But if there's any way to spread that out over, over, over two budget years, it would be great. And I don't know if there's any, uh, how you're doing on, uh, on this year's budget, but if you could squeak out some money this year to pay for some of that, just just to spread out the cost a little bit instead of having it all in one year, especially when we're when we're um, ratcheting up the the stipend so much, which believe me, I support and I think it's a good thing. But it just the combination of the two in one year makes a big uh, makes a big leap. That's why we're doing the the fundraising is to right. try to try to offset this with the, with the raffle and the. And the it's, I guess it's the letter that you brought up, Peter, when you, when you talked to the fire department back in midsummer. Oh no, I, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you all the way. I'm just trying. I guess the other way to the other way to uh, the other way to deal with this um, when this, of course, brings up the whole issue of the independent nonprofit versus the town fire department. But uh, we could potentially borrow. Uh, for some of that cost, if we didn't want to put it all in this year's mm -hmm. in this year's budget, I don't want to borrow for the stipend because that that money's gone at the end of the year. But what's the expected life of the turnout gear? Uh, Ten years. You know, so if we if we pay that, that off help. over over two years instead of one year, or maybe three mm -hmm. years, or something like that, it, it, would, it, it's it certainly an option. Up. It's certainly an option. And you know, see how the see how the fundraising goes. But I guess, I guess what I would prefer to do, and and help me out, Dorinda, in terms of how we would do this. But if we all agreed that the way to do this was to spread out the cost with with borrowing over three years, we should just put in one years, one years, one third of that number, and then add in some interest expense, right? Well, you would have to go out to a vote on it, I believe, if you want to take out any kind of um, loan on it. For that small amount? So that would it? have to be a special, I believe that you would, I, Sarah can correct me, but I think anything, anytime think so. you go out for any kind of loan, unless you're going to pay it off in one year, 
you have to um, get a special vote on it. Correct, Sarah? I believe that's true. You can do one year, you can do a one year note, which is what you know you do. But if you're yeah. going for more than that, you have to go to the voters. So it would be, you could yeah. actually make it a special article in the town meeting warning saying, should we go and borrow the right. dust right. much for that? Right. For and this would be the time to decide whether or not to do that. Right. I, yeah, so I don't think. I don't know how, I don't know how the budget committee and how the uh, select board feels about that, but I just hate to see a $30,000 jump in one year. I think it's a good idea to have a vote. Well, I think it's a good idea to spread out the cost. And if what we have to do is have the vote, then that's a good idea too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, spread, spread out the cost and have a vote. I don't think it would be any problem to have it pass. No, I don't either. Well, it, it should be considered as a capital asset. It's mm -hmm. a life of 10 years. That's right. right. Oh no! It's 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 like buying any other, like buying a. I, I mean, it's a much lower cost, but it's no different than buying a truck or a grader or a. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, when I looked at this, what jumped out at me is, oh my God! It's and it just my slime dog way of doing it. It's a thirty percent increase, and I kind of hate to see that. I don't think it's the best way to manage our town funds. So, well. Can I, can I add, you know, we're not, we're not voting on, we're not voting on the budget tonight. But no, no, that's, that, that's fine. I'm just, I just wanted to throw something out there. Okay. Uh, it, it, it might not be a bad idea to, to split out the turnout gear anyway, so that they're not coming due all at the same time again in 10 years. Do, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. They're still going to come, they're still going to come due. I mean, if you need the turnout gear now, I want to get you the turnout gear. I just want to spread out the spread out the paying for it. And if I got you. we face the same thing 10 years down the road, we do or we buy some of the town the turnout gear one year early and the other bunch one year later. I just want to make sure that the fire department has the correct turnout gear. Fair yeah, enough. And this is and this is from a budget committee standpoint, this is something we could plan for 10 years down the line. We could put this in. Is it a capital improvement asset? Right. right. I, I see you, Randy. I'll recognize you in a minute. Yeah. So I guess I guess what I'm suggesting for tonight is we we plan on doing that, uh, Dorinda, and we've just got to remember we just got to remember to do it when the time comes. Okay. So I'm going to take I'll take that out of the line item budget. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. I'm sorry. Is that you, Scott? I can't hear you. We can't hear you. Oh, I'm not saying nothing. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, Sarah. I'm just confused, but you say we have to plan for this and take this out. Could you just be a little bit more specific? Are you saying that you would like to have a special article on the warning for 2022 asking to raise, should we go into, to borrow for $30,000? That should be the plan for right now, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Just need that That's clarification. The final approval. Yes, Randy. Uh, I was just going to say something similar to what Mark said, and and uh, you know the fact that stuff like that's going to be incorporated into the capital plan. I do have a question, Eric. Though um, you know, you you said thirteen uh, uh, groups of turnout gear. How many how many members do you guys have now? Does that does that cover you know future expansion of the fire department if we think that we're going to continue to grow? What fifteen members? Yeah, we have 15 now, but several of them are juniors, so they don't they don't go they don't. in a burning building, so they don't okay. need the same level as uh, as the rest of us. Okay. Um, I guess, I think what I think what's Randy is asking Eric is, but if, okay, if the fire department continues to grow, like let's say by next July you have 15, or sometime during next year you have 15. Mm -hmm. Should we really be getting? I mean, I don't know how you do it because we can't. We can't buy the the turnout gear has to fit the firefighters. So well, that, is we that, can't that's say exactly to qualify. It. You have to be within this certain height <laughs> weight range. Yeah, yeah, what that's the done, problem. They get a fit. Right. What we've done in the past, Randy, is is the numbers are not great, and we find that money when we need to do it. I mean, if we have more if we have more firefighters and we need need new turnout gear, that's the good news. But to to buy turnout gear when we don't know the sizes and we don't everything anything else is 
of course, I suppose we could we could borrow the money and not spend it, but that doesn't seem like a good thing to do either. So my recommendation is we stick with the 13 and uh, yeah, maybe maybe save the best of the old turnout gear. I don't know how we do it. I'll, I'll yeah. trust you guys to manage that, but we can deal with that. Yep. So I, I'm a little confused. You mentioned the number of $30,000. Right. I'm I mean, uh, it was about that. <laughs> uh, it, the, the turnout gear is 16,900. Yeah, that's 16,000. Like, why would we be talking about 30? I, I was confused on the 30,000. I didn't know if, what, what that was about. That's you, Peter. I think it was, think it was a clerical error. Okay, that's fine. I, I was just like, oh, wait, did I miss something? No, no, no. <laughs> we're not going to borrow 30,000 to cover 16,000, 17,000. Okay. No. Mental okay. error. <laughs> that's fine. I just making sure that I wasn't missing something. The 30,000 the 30, was the combined stipend. Combined. And yeah, gotcha. But we're not borrowing for the stipend. No. No. There are. All of a sudden, my computer is printing words of what everyone's saying. Is everybody else getting that as well? Yeah, I'm going to be on Mary. One of the participants has asked for a transcript, uh, a live transcript, and that's all that's right. I, the norm. I just had that yep. happen. No, it's just you. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us, Mary? Hey, hey Eric, I got a question. Because I'm too yeah. far away. <laughs> um so when we do our fundraising even if we need some extra gear we can use from our fundraising for the gear if we need more if we get more members correct yes um eric have you done any fundraising this year uh we have uh got some stuff lined up that we're actually starting right now we we've got a uh uh a raffle we're going to be doing to win a uh, gun. Uh, yeah, and there's a few different few different things that we've got. Oh, the prizes. Because yeah. you didn't uh, work to do it at the at the concerts this summer, the raffle this summer. Correct. Doesn't that yeah, bring us right up to, to the regular meeting for them? Yes. Steve, you're 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 the <laughs> policeman of the uh, agenda tonight. Yep. Yeah, well, I just work. don't want it. I just don't want it to go to eight thirty. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. I know. I'm. I'm doing. I'm doing my best here. Bear with me. But keep you're doing good. I, as long as you say it in a positive way, I respect your comments. How about that? Here, right? Yeah. More so. Okay. So I think we're all set then, guys. Right. Uh, I have one more thing. If you have uh, like about a minute and a half. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have the uh, the monthly report. Jeff had emailed it to me. Our total calls to date is 53. Yeah. Over the last month, we've had three calls, zero mutual aid out and zero mutual aid in. The max number of responders we had was six. The minimum number of responders was three, so we average is four. Uh, engine one went out twice. Engine six did not go out at all. Tanker one went out once. Rescue one went out once. The calls were on the 30th of October. There was trees across East Hill Road right by your house, Peter. Yeah. Engine one, tanker one, rescue one, and six members responded. And we actually called in the uh, town's road crew to assist us in removing this. It was a clump of trees. It wasn't just one tree across the road. On uh, November 1, we had a, a gas odor on uh, Gallagher Road. Uh, nothing was found. We swapped out a CO detector, turned the gas back on, relit the appliances, uh, engine one and three responders. On the 8th of November, we had a car versus deer motor vehicle accident on I-89. Uh, I responded in my own vehicle. The, Car that hit the deer was damaged. Uh, there was no fire danger. Uh, the deer was actually hit prior to this vehicle hitting it. So I held everything in quarters and there were three responders. For training, we did scene command exercises and radio operations for non-officer firefighters. 
uh, repairs. E1 is having problems with the battery tender. We're still working on it. We made no major purchases. Uh, one additional item is uh, Mike Pelcher of the Camp Mead Complex. We had a couple of false alarms this fall. He has installed a fire alarm zone map, which Jeff inspected and found uh, missing a door to the back area. Uh, Mike is gonna update the map. So that is the fire department working with in the community. Hmm. End of report. Good report. Thank you, Doug. Yeah. Thank you, Doug. Doug. And I wasn't trying to cut you short, uh, uh, but because you guys still have time, I just was trying to get to that regular meeting of the fire department. So <laughs> uh, you're way yeah. ahead of schedule now. Yeah. Yeah, we'll just trying to help out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. If you want to know, Eric, the new total for the budget is 86067, and that's a 24.06% increase. Yep. But with that is the potential for property and casualty and workers' compensation to change. Right, correct. And you'll give me those numbers when you get them? As soon as I get them, you'll get them. Awesome. By the way, Dorinda, yep. just, as a, just as a by the by and hearkening back to my old life, my understanding is, believe it or not, workers' comp rates are going down. Unemployment rate went down, but I haven't gotten anything on, uh, not that it went down that much, but um, it, the, I haven't gotten anything on the other yet. So well, it may not be, it may not be bad news. I, I have no idea on the property casualty side what's going on. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So um, do we have anything else with regard to the, uh, we're, we're, We've, I guess, left our budget meeting temporarily, at least, just just so we can finish up with the uh, just so we can finish up with the fire department. Anything else? Anything else for the fire department? No. Nope. I, I would just put everybody, uh, fire department and and select board, on alert that I think we owe, uh, as a community, we owe a response to both Waterbury and Montpelier, who were offering to help us back in the early stages of this update process. And we also need to make a decision about how we're gonna go forward on the, on the governance issue, which we haven't had a lot of, a lot of discussion about. I just, I just like to say again uh, to the fire department and to the select board, I think we've really uh, made good progress and turned the corner on our relationship and how we interact with each other. And I think that's a, that's a wonderful thing. And we have, you know, we have some more work, we have some more work to do, but let's, uh, let's keep it up. And I look forward to my visit with you guys next month in December. Sounds good. Yeah. I think we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. Thank you, Eric. Any, anything I think you the report that you give us are tremendously helpful. Good. I think we have a much better sense of what you're doing in the community. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I agree. Yep. Okay, guys, we're all set. Thank you very much. Have a Thank good night. You. Hey. No so do we, let's see, it's now six o'clock. Believe it or not, we're a little ahead of schedule. Do we want to do more, uh, more budget stuff? Yes. I think we should. Unless we're keeping somebody waiting on. Uh... No, we're not. The next. The next agenda item is 620 Central Vermont Police Community Advisory Board update. And Kim's not on the Zoom yet. Yeah, Kim is on. Kim, oh, Kim is on. Kim is Kim is here. Oh, well, maybe we should Hello. do. Hi. I I I am here. I I didn't I see you. <laughs> to go now. Yeah, no, I want to get here. Sorry. And she also has not she has another meeting to go to, I believe. Well, why don't we why don't we let why don't we let Kim give give her report and then we can go if we have extra time we'll go back to the budget. Is that okay with everyone? Yeah. Fine. Thank, okay, thank Kim. You. Thank you. Thank you. I not quite as prepared as I'd like to be, but <laughs> so I am Kim Volbeck and I am one of the two elected Middlesex reps to the Central Vermont State Police Community Advisory Board, which is a mouthful. So from now on, I will probably just say the board. 
Um, the line item on the agenda is the short story of why I'm here. Um, I'll try to keep the long story short as well. The good news is I'm a speed talker. So if somebody doesn't understand me or you want me to slow down, uh, just raise your hand, wave at me. Um, so I'm gonna start by briefing, briefly outlining what the board is and some of the data that I'm gonna share is based on a 2014 document, which I forwarded to Sarah earlier. Um, and she's welcome to share it with any of you if you have any questions. She did, I believe. Um, Isn't that what you sent us, Sarah? Oh, yep, perfect. that's what I sent you. Perfect. Yeah. So, we've so all got I'm gonna highlight just a few things of the, um, it's kind of like a newsletter. Right. Um, of the 251 towns and cities in the state, 200 towns don't have their own police fort. The Vermont State Police has 12 field stations across the state and the Middlesex station serves 18 towns in Washington and Orange County. In addition to the usual police work, the Vermont State Police also provides specialized services, including bomb squad, crisis negotiation, scuba team and rescue, tactical services, seasonal marine and snowmobile patrols, along with a few new ones. The board helps raise awareness uh, between what services are provided. They do not bill towns for services unless the town chooses to contract with the Vermont State Police for additional patrol time. And that's something I would have to defer to Sarah to know if we still do that, how much do we do it and all of that information. The board awareness of the need for better communication between towns and the state police inspired the state police to authorize the creation of a community advisory board. In 2004, the board was formed. It is an independent nonprofit corporation where officers elected by and from among the representatives to the board from 18 towns. Uh, Board members are ordinary citizens appointed to the board by their select board. The mission of the board is to communicate between law enforcement and the community, not just among law enforcement. It works to increase understanding and awareness of the state police and law enforcement issues and to provide better ways to advocate for public safety. Um, again, this was written in 2004. 14 and the accomplishments in the first 10 years were really expansive um, and there's a whole list of them on that newsletter and the big one for highlight for me is always uh, this trooper appreciation picnic in August um, the board hosts the troopers their families our board members our families and um, the guest speakers are all welcome to come as well. This year, it was a really great event because all of these troopers work together and they never get a chance to see each other and they never get a chance to meet each other's family. We had a great turnout this year. We hosted at the Waterbury Fishing Game um, and, and it was a really nice event. We actually had to kick them out because we all wanted to go home. <laughs> it was like 7.30 and we were like, let's go, let's go. Um, there's a lot of ongoing education by the station commander and guest speakers. Um, while under the direction of Lieutenant Nally, he used to have a really lot of informative presentations and distributions to the towns that we would handle by front porch form or minutes provided to the town clerks or select boards. Um, Lieutenant Nally was really proactive in a system that they called spider webbing uh, and they would basically use cross communication between towns to accumulate all of this data in a spider web and circle it in to connect dots to solve crimes. And a lot of what he did was based on the presentations that he provided to us at the board. So why am I here tonight and what changed? Leadership changed. Lieutenant Nally retired three years ago, I believe. And his replacement, Lieutenant White, had just come on board for about a year before COVID hit um, at a time when there was a lot of staffing issues and a lot of decreased overtime. Um, attitudes across the country changed to, towards law enforcement, and Vermont was no stranger to that. 
Uh, volunteer burnout is a huge one um, and lack of representation on this board. So at our last meeting, we met probably, we used to meet every other month during COVID, the majority of the time, I think in the last two years or the last 18 months, we've had three Zoom calls and one kind of ad hoc meeting in the middle of the afternoon. Um, so we reviewed our town coverage, which is basically out of 18 towns and two dedicated full-time Waterbury troopers we have 14 reps. Several of them are very inactive. A few towns do have two reps. At our last meeting, we had seven people present. We discussed our mission, the current needs, thoughts for the future, what changes might be needed, views on law enforcement and pr procedures. We discussed the level of commitment from both the towns, the state police and board members and the result of COVID fatigue. We had a heartfelt discussion on the pros and cons of continuing. How much more could volunteer time be? What communications do we use to get the message out about what we do? What differences has social media um, made against what we do? You know, we were originally Neighborhood Watch. We did a lot of the communication and now it's real time stuff. It doesn't do any good to communicate something a month later. Um, most of the reps monitor the front porch forms and report things back to the state police if they feel a need to, or if they see something, they might reach out to their, if they see something on front porch form, they might reach out to that person and say, hey, I'm the rep, what do you want me to communicate? Um, it's been, financially a little challenging. We receive donations from the towns if they're willing. Some are budgeted matters and some are strictly donations. Um, our major expense is the picnic. It usually averages around $400 and we usually break about even on that. Um, our president, Jeff, and his last name just totally escaped me, Campbell. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. And Yep. Jeff Campbell. Jeff Campbell, yes. And Lieutenant White um, planned to meet this week and something got pushed back. So they're going to meet in about a month and have a heartfelt discussion about how our board can assist the Vermont State Police with their mission and what the future of the board might look like to benefit the 18 towns. We're gonna make an assessment based on that feedback. The lieutenant's buy-in because the transition from Lieutenant Nally's buy-in to Lieutenant White's buy-in has been significantly decreased. And the commitment level of all of the involved, um, that's gonna help chart our future on whether we continue, whether we disband and what overhauls we could make to the program. So we decided that each board member would kind of reach out to the towns because many of the board members that are currently on the towns are not the same ones who elected us. Um, many of them don't know anything about the board. And um, so I'm coming tonight to start that conversation about how our board can assist communication between the Middlesex Vermont State Police, which in a few years will be the middle, uh, the Berlin barracks of the Vermont State Police, um, our town office, its citizens and our board. Uh, and a few other towns have met and those discussions have prompted an agreement that ongoing communication is essential to the effective policing but what that communication looks like depends a lot on the input received from Lieutenant White and meetings like this. So how'd I do? How long did I take? Very good. And it didn't take Before, long. Tim, So I, I would I would just have a couple of a, a couple of quick comments and, and we'll see if other board members have anything to say. 
Number one, I appreciate the, the bulletins you put out on Front Porch Forum from time to time about particular situations that are going on that involve our community and the state police. I think that is a, a, a great tool to use. And while not everybody in our community is on Front Porch Forum, many people are. And that's certainly a very cost effective way to, uh, to get the word out. And I think it's great to, to get your report. Um, we don't need to hear from you all the time, but when you have something you need to say to us, we, we welcome your uh, participation in our meetings. And I guess I would, I mean, the, the state police across the state of Vermont and across the country have tremendous challenges ahead of them. And they need the support of all the citizens who they support to be able to do an effective job. So how, whatever we can do as a community to help and uh, certainly by having Having you representing us, we feel like we're we're doing a good job right there. How about that? Because I'm sure, knowing you fairly well over the years, I know you're not a you're not a shadow in the background. You don't hesitate to speak up when there's something to say, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else, anybody? Kim, thank you for your work. Um, and have you had any luck in trying to find someone to replace? Uh, Oh, what was his first name? Coffee? Uh, Everett. Everett, yeah. Everett. No, we have not. I, again, it is an elected person by the board. I have not solicited anyone because with COVID, we weren't really barely meeting. Um, it is a board that is aging out. Um, our callous representatives, um, you know, it, it's, I, I am, I'm gonna go on a limb here. I'm not sure and I'm not, I, I am one of the younger uh, <laughs> members of this board. Good for you, Kim. <laughs> so, Kim, I have a question. Yes. Um, so I, I, I kind of didn't quite understand at the very end you were saying, is is one of these lieutenants like not terribly supportive of having these community groups? I think he group? is very overwhelmed, Liz. Um, he took over from Lieutenant Nally. And if you ever met Lieutenant Nally, he has like eight kids, I think. And he, he was mm -hmm. amazing. Um, and I think Lieutenant White, he has not officially attended I think he attended one of our meetings in the three years that he's been lieutenant um very overwhelmed often gone to training and with the barracks being so short staffed and not allowing any overtime he just he's juggling too much and I so think, when you meet, there isn't even a police presence there, a state police presence there. One time he sent somebody on his behalf. One time he, uh, 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 somebody directly under him. One time he sent a guest speaker. You know, we were spoiled by Lieutenant Nally. He would put yeah. out an agenda and he would bring us pizza. <laughs> and he would tell us in advance who the guest speaker was and give an update on the barracks of how many mm -hmm. staffing they had, what the guys were doing, the communication. And I don't think it's intentional. I think a, a multitude of circumstances, you know, and could it have gotten mm -hmm. better if COVID hadn't hit? Absolutely. Um, but the intention of this group is sort of to be like liaisons a little bit with the community, right? Like, yes, to be able to kind of, you know, if there were some issue in the community and, you know, we said, you know, we really, you know, feel like the police should be doing X, Y, or Z. We could go to your group and say, and feel like we had some sort of, I mean, I think it's a really important group to have, frankly, and I would be really disheartened to see that it does get disbanded. Um, it, it, I mean, it's it, not an oversight group per se, but it does probably no, offer, no. yeah, but no, it does offer all. some sort of communication between the community and the state police, correct? Correct. Yeah, it is definitely not an oversight. And one of, 
the big things that Lieutenant Nally did would be to bring in representatives. I mean, we had like these, I mean, we had the bomb squad come in and give a presentation. The, the specialty forces of the VSP are pretty incredible in what they do. He had the search and rescue team at a Waterbury come in. The knowledge that these people, they'd give like a 20 minute to a half hour presentation and the knowledge that they would give. And one of the biggest things we struggled with, how do we get that information back out into the community? I mean, you yeah. can't put a 20 minute presentation on the bomb squad out in the community. Um, everything from, you know, the mental health crisis, uh, the drug crisis, he would have all of these people and then he really nailed down into the, the spider webbing and what the behinds of the scenes and the emergency plans for towns and you know the response during Irene. There were there is so much information that would come out of that. And one of our biggest struggles has always been what do we do with it? Mm -hmm. You know, so we we tried for a while to and as much as I'm a speed talker, I'm the secretary of the board. My, my secretary minutes are pages long. <laughs> so I try to drill it down and summarize bullet points to put out on front porch form, but it became really time consuming. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so, and nobody was sharing them anyway. So, that's one of the hugest challenges from our standpoint is what what's our purpose because mm -hmm. the mission has changed so much with the addition of social social media um and then the second one is actually getting volunteers on the board so i Personally, I mean, you're welcome to have one select board representation. It's ordinary citizens, but I think some people, their town constable, somebody from the sheriff's department, there's a lot of different representation. And this um, is all around the state too, with different barracks, right? Um, this, this board was created. Each barracks had their own board. Okay. Um, when Lieutenant Nally left St. Albans and our board were the only two active ones. Okay. Um, and I believe St. Albans has now disbanded as well. What's your recommendation? I would like to see it continue in some form. Um, my first recommendation is that we get the representation um, that we get every town to have representation. Uh, and maybe, and maybe one thing, maybe one thing we can do and our uh, select board assistant is really good at this is to get the word out in the community that we're looking for a volunteer to work with you in the town of Middlesex to at least take some of the, take some of the heat off you and, and, uh, and have some backup. I think we can do that and, and get the word out and see if we can't find somebody for you. That would be much appreciated. It was so one of our plans, if we decide to continue, we are going to write a letter to each town asking them again, you have a chance to elect two reps. You currently have one, you don't have any. Mm -hmm. yep. Okay, well, I think I think what you've what you've heard from us tonight is number one, we're supportive of your efforts, and we we hope that this uh, relationship with the state police will be able to continue. But let us let us go to work, and uh, Sarah is listening. I know she'll put that on her on her list, and and uh, and get the word out, and see if we can find somebody who would be interested to work with you. Okay, and the the second thing is, you know, I think thank you very much because I think each year pretty much I did not ask this year but I do know that um I usually late October or November do ask for a donation and I think you know pretty continually I think we've gotten like a $75 donation from the town um and that all goes to the picnic so thank yeah. you
I can't imagine that will be a problem. Great. <laughs> thank, thank you, you all very much. Yeah, we've got to move on. Thank we've got to move on. Uh, but thank you very much for all the work you do for us. Thanks, Bye -bye. Kim. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Kim. That was a good presentation. Okay. So we've still got we've still got the budget committee here. We have about uh, ten minutes until. Uh, we're supposed to hear from the uh, from the highway department and get on with the rest of our agenda. Can we can we move down our our little chart here, Dorinda and Sarah, a little further? Yeah, yeah. Um, under public safety, um, I plugged in a seventy two thousand dollars for the ambulance. That seems to we it had been seventy thousand the year before. We never seemed to get these numbers in time for anything. And um, last year we had plugged in what it had been the year before, and it had come in like you know a couple thousand dollars higher. So if it came in at seventy thousand uh, year last year, I figure if we went to seventy two, it might be a good number. Yeah. Um, and speed enforcement. I don't know. We continually, we know what the problems are there. We always put money in the budget. Um, again, I can plug in what we've been doing, but it's a cost savings thing. If we really think we're not going to spend it, maybe we should reduce it by a couple thousand dollars, maybe bring you it know, down to 5,000. I hate to do this, but I agree. I think it should go yeah. down to 5,000. We, if we can't spend the money, it's foolish to put it in there. Yeah. We've got other other things we need to yeah. spend the money on. Okay. Okay. Gonna do it. I mean, and that isn't to say, and that isn't to say we don't, we don't, when the contract comes up, we don't put in a higher number and hope they can do it and find the money somewhere if, if in fact they can. We'd love to have more speed enforcement, but I don't think we're gonna get it. Oh, they're sure. shorthanded. Yeah. yeah. Just heard how shorthanded they are, and there's no overtime. Right. On the other hand, if there's no overtime, maybe we will get more <laughs> because that's the only extra money they can earn. Uh, who knows? But it's been a it's been an ongoing frustration to me that we we can't ever get the service we contract for. So. Um. The next group, which we can continue to wait on the cemetery, um, that's been yep. like $6,900 budgeted for the last several years. I, you know, we'll wait and see what happens. If not, I'll just plug in that number. Yep. Um, have we requested budget numbers from them? Yes, mm -hmm. we have. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and down under zoning and board of adjustment. Um, I just need some direction again on an advertising and legal enforcement, how much you would like to put in those. Okay, what line item are you on? I'm sorry. This is under zoning and board of adjustment. It's like uh, 242. Two, four, two, line 242 yeah, well, and 243. Yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. Thank you. For some reason, my fingers aren't working very well. There we go. What What is the legal enforcement for zoning? Like, what What does that mean? Well, if there's somebody any kind doesn't of, do it, if there's any kind of, I think we've had, um, haven't we had the lawyer involved in some zoning? Okay. Issue. Well, don't, we have, don't we have that appeal or does that come under um, something else, Sarah? The appeal of the... I don't know where that comes under the budget. I know that it was the appeal of the Planning Commission decision, but uh, with, you, you know, the way properties are getting subdivided now, uh, I would not be surprised. Do not lower that number. That's, that's mm. going to be a big legal cost, I'm afraid. You well, mean the... anything, I'm wondering if it should go up. Because we spent yes. twenty nine ninety and we only budgeted three, so put in three thousand. Oh, yeah. please. Yeah. Okay, and then advertising again. Every time we do something, we have to advertise. So, um, maybe four hundred then. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, and the, and, the, and the rates of the Times Argus have gone up as well. So everything's okay. going up. It'd be higher then, like maybe 500? No, that's, well, we only budgeted $50 last year, so. <laughs> And I, think I think 400 is fine. I mean, it's, gonna be, it's, it's one of those things that's going to be whatever it is. So, okay. It is what it is. Um, and then we had down under the planning commission, they didn't. Um, nope, that, uh, that one's all set. Never mind. Um, just didn't carry that over. So, I think that pretty much takes care of. Um, everything I plugged in, um, which I don't know is on your sheets or not, what we had for uh, special articles so far, which they're just starting to really come in now. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. So you will send out, will you send us updated sheets? I will send out updated sheets, um, but I'm going to hold off on sending them to see if I get anything over the next because week or so, because we won't no. meet again for what, two weeks? Yeah. Oh my God. Wow. God. You get a week off. We, we yeah. won't know what to do on a Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> we could go out to the bar, Phil. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay thank you thank you dorinda any any uh i guess i guess the one thing uh i have on my list that we need to be thinking about is <coughs> so we've made these interim payroll adjustments there's nothing in this budget for projected raises for next july 1st and we need to think about what that what that number is that we're going to put in here and uh, unfortunately, I think it needs to be a pretty good number. I think 2% is yeah. probably too low. So I don't know whether it's 3% or 4% or what it is, but um, we need to plug something in there because that's going to make a significant difference. And it trickles down through a lot of these, uh, yeah. a lot of these accounts. Yeah. Anything else, uh, budget committee or select board or Dorinda? Okay. No, not in regards to the budget. I have a lot of empties on the planning commission. Um, and and uh, have you, I mean, you have nothing for legal and you have nothing for all those grants. Are they going to be, are they all? They didn't put any, the planning commission gave me their budget. So if that, those shouldn't be blank. Let me go back up there. But I'm a, this is Elias from the Planning Commission. I sent you a budget and it, it did have those blanks because we've already, they're not expenses we expect in the future. Right. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so you don't have anything in for legal, even though there's that uh, pending appeal? So I don't think the planning, I don't think it's ever been part of the Planning Commission's budget, those legal expenses. Um, I don't know where they get recorded. And I don't think, we don't even know how much it would cost in the past. So I think I would defer to, to your judgment on I think what it's legal in the zoning. Are. I think it's in the zoning, Mary. I think so too. Maybe we should. But, I mean, yeah, I think Sarah's makes, comment so. is right that, you know, with the way subdivisions are going these days, we seem likely to be hitting some snags and, you know, hopefully we can improve the, the way our zoning regs are written so they don't have as much room for that. What kind of issues have come up, Elias? Um, the way the the way they're written right now, it's very hard to follow what's expected in terms of the zoning regulations. Um, and it, we're, you know, a few times we've run into issues where someone's saying, well, we want to subdivide, but we don't have a plan to build. And the regulations don't clearly allow for that. So you have to sort of make these decisions without knowing exactly what you're going to do about them. I don't, I don't know if that doesn't quite make sense, but basically uh, it doesn't have a good yeah. way to deal with subdividing but not developing okay interesting that's the major issue that twice in this last year we've run into it that the most recent appeal was basically around that um because you know the planning commission said well we need to know what you know if you if you subdivide without developing 
and then you do someone applies to develop a single property you don't get the same review of like contiguous you know forest lands and stuff because you're only able to review one property instead of the whole original subdivision and so those are that's where it gets tricky is how do you how do you deal with a situation where someone really just wants to split their land up but not build on it in terms of the town being able to maintain you know forest lots or whatnot or like a plan for drainage over the whole property. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Not any. I don't know. Can I ask a question about the budget? Back to what um, uh, Peter just said about you know the the wages. Um, what are these uh, in the budget? Um, what are these fiscal year 2022 2023 numbers? Where did those come from? For oh, like select board so clerk. Those are the numbers that you decided on it last week. Okay, so those are the numbers we decided on last week without any kind of increase, right? Correct. Correct. For the for the 2022 year. Okay. Um, So I thought line. we hadn't decided, like, I thought we weren't going to change anything about the select board. Like, why is there a 20% increase in that? I thought we didn't change the select board wages. We didn't well, change. Well, so tiny. Um, I think because we added, um, that's because we added, um, added the road up. commissioner as a new position. Um, oh, and okay. we were gonna, we were paying him at what we were paying the chair. Okay. And so that increased it. It wasn't in last year's budget because it happened part way through the year. Okay. So our next discussion is what is the increase over what we see right now? What percentage increase would we like to offer for wages and benefits to the road crew and the select uh, and to the um, town? Uh, Everyone. Yeah. Okay. And, and typically, and have typically that conversation? Just to remind you what we've done is we put in an overall percentage. Right. But at times, everybody hasn't gotten that percentage raise. Some have gotten a little more and some have gotten less, but the overall raise has come out to that percentage. Yeah. But, you know, we're going to have with the other the other part of this is we're going to have an ongoing discussion and probably at least one, if not more uh special meetings to discuss just in general the way we deal with rates of pay and wages and you know mm -hmm. are we uh, are we going to reward years of service are we going to provide uh pay changes for different levels of skill that whole discussion that we that we started mm -hmm. i don't want to get i don't want to get away from that but we need to put it in some kind of number because i have to believe we're going to need to spend mm -hmm more money as of July. The other thing I would I would tell all of you just by the by is this week all town employees with their with their pay stub, most of them don't get checks, but they all get get pay stubs. Um, I've sent them a letter talking about the interim increases and the original plan was to in that letter have what those interim increases were, but we ran out of time. So the promise is with their December 16th paycheck, which is the first time they will see the new raises, mm -hmm. that there will be another letter saying, here's what your previous rate of pay is, here's what your new rate of pay is, just so it's all in documented in writing. Mm -hmm. so, so for the time, does it make sense to put in for wages that are in this 2022 line or column E, like a 3%? increase or two and a half percent increase just as I don't, a place. I don't think so. I mean what what I what I said in the letter is that an additional pay raise is anticipated for July 1st, 2022, but it's subject to the budget discussion and approval by the voters at town meeting. So I can tell you if we put in there that we plugged in a three percent or four percent or two percent increase and then somebody doesn't get that increase, they're gonna be screaming bloody murder again. So I am no, but my point is I'd like to see what it looks like. What does it look like on our overall budget if we were to do that? Well, we're going to put in a number. That's that's what I'm saying. We need to come up with what that number is. 
but I, I just don't want to promise any individual employer yeah. to get that. No, I'm not, I'm not asking that. Okay. I'm sorry. I misunderstood. He was just suggesting we put in a figure or maybe we should do several figures, 2%, 3%, 4%. Yeah. Just something. what it looks like. I mean, but that's we're going to I, later on about this. Yeah, that's exactly what I was just talking about that. We need to make that decision and we haven't done it yet. Okay. Right. <laughs> I mean, absolutely. Right. That's a big, that's a big, uh, that's a big number. Typically, <laughs> typically in the past, we have done that after we deal with everything else and we know where we are. But I'm I'm happy to. I don't think we have time tonight to do it. Is what I'm saying. No. Don't say we have to meet next Tuesday. <laughs> I'm not saying we have to meet next Tuesday either. Okay. Can we move on? Anything else? Anybody? Yeah. No. Okay, so we're on to the highway department update. And we have, I believe, Victor and Shane here with us. Is Shane still here? Yep. Yeah, there he is. Okay. Gentlemen. I don't think anyone wants to do the contracting. No subcontracting. Well, I, I guess I guess what I can report and uh and Steve and Vic can speak up is, is I spoke to, oh, I, I spoke to uh, TJ Kingsbury, and I also spoke to, oh God, I'm blanking out, our, our uh, Jamie Baldock. And I also had a conversation today uh, with Matt Dwyer from McCulloch Rushing. And the message was, pretty similar from all three of them. If we are really caught in a, in a tough emergency type situation, they'll try and all of them will try and help us out any way they can. Um, but they are all more or less dealing with the same problems we're dealing with. They don't have enough help to do the work that they already, already need to do. And uh, in terms of uh, subcontracting for an employee or an employee in a truck for the winter, uh, they weren't willing to do that at this point in time. And I think the same was the same was true of, uh, of your conversation, Steve, correct? Yes, that's exactly right. Uh, Jeff Newton uh, would, would love to, uh, I had two different conversations with him. He really wanted to do it, but he, he just couldn't commit to it because of, especially because of the help. Uh, so he didn't even put numbers to it, but it would have been a pretty good number too, because they were going to be, I mean, they're on call 24 seven, that, that vehicle that they would commit and the, the personnel were or committed to the town. So, but he just doesn't have the personnel. So it's a, basically the same story. I mean, if, if, if we were in an emergency situation and we called him, he'd see if he could help us out, but, but that was it. So. <laughs> I think where we are is is this, and we might as well deal with this situation first, and then we can talk about uh, any other updates um, <laughs> about about other issues. But the but the big gorilla issue is um, what do we do about this? What do we do about this hiring situation? And and the, the where I think we are, and please anybody else speak up if they disagree, is we have a decision to make whether we're gonna go ahead and I am not in favor of changing our nepotism policy. Um, I'm in favor of having a, having a statement in our minutes that we recognize that we are, uh, I hate to use the word violating, <laughs> whatever, whatever the right word is that we're, we're recognizing that we're not following our nepotism policy uh, and the reason we're doing that is because of the very tight uh, and difficult employment situation that we're facing and our, uh, and our inability uh, in almost six months time to be able to, uh, to hire anybody. Um, and I think, I think with that, the decision is, do we go ahead and, and hire this gentleman as, as we discussed? Or do we make the decision that we're going to try and struggle along with a three-person road crew? Because that's what I think we're talking about. And 
you've heard me say over and over again, I, I think the, the three person road crew is a potential real problem. I think, you know, with, with three people, can we, as, as Gary Lamel said last year, we got along for a long time with the three person road crew. Sometimes the roads weren't plowed in a timely manner. Sometimes work wasn't done in a timely manner. Um, all those issues. That's why we went to a four person road crew. Well, what I'm more scared about is I think potentially we could limp along with a three person road crew if we have to, and that's the decision. But what happens if, if one or two people get sick, then where are we? We're really, 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 really in trouble. And that's when we've got to start calling on these outside contractors and hoping they're going to bail us out. So um, I've had Victor, Victor made the comment to me that he has chapter and verse of many situations in the state of Vermont where they violated uh, nepotism clauses. Um, we historically in the past have, uh, I was laughing with Matt Dwyer today saying there was a time when, uh, when we thought the McCullough family was, uh, was running our town road crew. You know, I mean, it's a, it's a very tough, uh, it's a very tough situation, but I think we need to, my recommendation is we go ahead and do this hire and that we don't change our nepotism policy. And we just have a statement in the, in the, in the, in our motion that we understand that we are not following our nepotism policy for this particular yeah. reason. I agree with that. And, you know, I'm interested in hearing what other people think about this, but I do think we need to make the decision tonight. I don't think we can push it down the road any further. Yes, Phil. Yeah, I, I agree uh, with you, Peter. I'm, I'm not in favor of actually changing the nepotism policy. And I think rather than saying that we're, we're violating it, we're actually um, going to grant a waiver. Um, this is a you know, specific situation brought on by labor shortages, the inability to hire uh, a qualified person. And you know, we're knowingly uh, granting a waiver to be able to fill a position uh, because we've exhausted um, all uh, other opportunities that we uh, we have. So, yeah, yeah I like favorite. the word I like the word waiver rather than violate. That's a nicer, yeah. nicer yeah. tone to it. I agree. Anybody else? Liz, Mary. Yes, I Mary. still oppose changing it because this is a tight labor market. But this hire is a person who we hope will be with us for a very long time, and so it's a continuing waiver. It's not just He's not just coming on for the winter. He's coming on, we hope, for a good long time. And it, yeah. and it, it, it bothers me. There, it, it's like, you know, maybe we're going back to the days and the McCulloughs, McCulloughs were in charge. And now it's going to be um, the Bricky Martins or whatever. I just, yeah, I, I, I just can't support it. Okay. Any other thoughts, Shane, Vic? Um, I'd like to just make a comment that um, I understand the need for the road crew, an additional road crew. Um, I think it's hard to go back to a three-person road crew um, because the four person road crew has been, I think, um, more effective and we get more done, obviously. Um, and also, you know, just with the weather, erratic weather that we have, um, we just don't know. Like, we can't predict whether it's going to be a super snowy winter, a super icy winter. Um, and that, you know, I think in the best interest of the town, it makes sense to have a fourth person. Um, I will, uh, I agree with Mary that I'm uncomfortable with um, a close family member working for, um, for Shane, just in, just in what could potentially be backlash from the other road crew, um, some perceived favoritism, 
um, whether or not that exists or not, you, you know, you just don't know. Um, and so, um, I, I, you know, I, I guess I would vote in favor of it, but I would also note that we could have some problems um, in general with um, morale or... Uh, well, um, here, just to, not to interrupt you, but understand, you know, we're, we're hiring this gentleman or we're proposing to hire this gentleman. If for some reason there are problems and issues that come up down the road, we'll have to deal with those problems. And could that mean that this person has to be terminated potentially, maybe, possibly? I would, I would uh, doubt it, but in a worst case scenario, that's what would have to happen. And, you know, uh, Shane, I think, understands that and is ready to deal with that and, and take that risk. He's comfortable with this. Uh, Victor's comfortable with it. Um, I have some of the same doubts um, you and Mary have, Liz. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, if we'd been able to find anybody who was remotely qualified, I would have preferred hiring that person over this person who has perfect experience and is the ideal employee, I think, in every other way. But this is the situation we've got, and I think we need to move ahead. Peter, it's Paul. If I may throw a couple comments in there. Um, I, you know, obviously speaking from experience with Steve and I, you know, uh, what I would add on top of what Liz has said, you know, just the level of expectation from roads with school buses and, and whether it's a snowy winter or not, it, it really only takes one event, uh, you know, for, for things to kind of go haywire, the, the snow's a little bit wetter, uh, the timing is just a little bit off, uh, you know, obviously, as everybody knows, I'm a big advocate for a four person road crew just knowing what what can happen you know a, a tire blows and all of a sudden there's there's another guy going to help the broke down vehicle that that only leaves one guy you know maintaining the roads um the the one thing i wanted to add with the gentleman you know the subject at hand here is is i think we had in in the employee handbook didn't we have a probationary period that that, that person had to go through or am i am i mistaken yeah Yes, we have a six month probationary period. Yeah, uh, you know, I mean, I, I, oh, what's that? It was taken out. Oh, it was because taken out. Okay. The probationary period. Oh, take it out. You're right, Dorinda. I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. Um, you know, I, I don't know if what, what the legality is or the procedure, but, but it might be worth putting something in there. Um, you know, just to say, you know, because of the circumstances, we, we do acknowledge, uh, you know, the nepotism clause and all of that. Um, but because of this, we're, we're going to add this in, in, in hopes of, uh, you know, mitigating any, any issues down the road and, and having a little bit of, uh, you know, within the right of way, I guess I would call it where, where you've got some, some legal uh, power j just to, if potential issues do, do come up. I don't know if that's, you know, something that, that might be considered just to protect the town, but obviously I'm in favor of the fourth guy, but can certainly appreciate the, you know, the situation. So all I would all I would do on that subject is remind everybody, and I think this is part of the reason we did away with that probationary clause. And I apologize for my misstatement because I do remember that we took it out. Um, all our employees are are what's called employees at will, which means they can be uh, dismissed at any time for any any reason. Now, can you right. you know can can they? go after us and say we discriminated against them because of their race, religion, you know, who knows, who knows what, that those kind of things are always an issue. But, but basically in, term, in terms of being able to dismiss them if there are issues and problems, that is not an issue as long as we do it with proper warning and notice and all the, all the usual stuff. So I, I don't think, I don't think that that probationary thing is as uh is as good as or effective as it was in the old days is what i'm saying paul yeah excellent no i again uh certainly in favor of the fourth guy uh, you know can and, and and i would hope if if his resume shows and and his uh you know references check out you know that's that's our that always been our standard procedure so um you know if all that checks hey um 
sounds like we know a guy who knows a guy. So I, you know, you never know. We obviously we know that that shortage of labor is is real, and uh, at this point, we're we're in quite a tight spot. Yeah, Peter. Oh yeah, yeah. Hold on a minute, Vic. Yeah. Okay. Dorinda had her hand up. Yeah, I know, Dorinda. Um, just a couple of things back on what you were saying about the employment at will, unless there was discrimination. The, the potential could come back that we were discriminating because he was a relative. So I just want to make that statement that, you know, um, the other question I have is in regards to the number of vehicles that we have. How soon will our other, right now, my understanding is there's only one truck that's up and running. How soon will we have another truck to put this person in? That, that's not, go ahead, Shane. There's two trucks up and running, and the uh, third truck will be back either Friday or the beginning of next week. Okay, so the, we must have just gotten another one back, because a week ago there what? was only one, correct? Yeah, we got, came back last week, midweek maybe. We got a, we got a break, and, uh, and uh, the gentleman that's working on the freight liner found one out and uh, found the part out in the Midwest, and we're supposed to have it, as Shane told me. And uh, so we should be set with the freight liner next week. But I will say, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't know, I haven't known Shane a long time, but uh, I've been impressed with the time I have known him, and I really don't believe he would allow somebody to go to work, even if it is his brother-in-law, that wasn't going to work out for him. I think the, the thing that we got going here is a lot of fear. And the worst fear is fear itself. Uh, uh, and and as, as Peter has said, I, I know people, uh, uh, you know, uh, McCullough's has worked for a lot of people, a lot of different towns. There's a lot of road commissioners and, uh, and, uh, that are run by two people or even three and their, their father, son, um, it can work. And uh, I don't see why you wouldn't give it a chance. It's uh, this three man crew is a great idea, but uh, it really won't work out well. And one of the reasons uh, I believe uh, Paul can uh, correct me uh, if, uh, well, one of the reasons is that you, uh, we're plowing all the roads at once. And whereas if we only had a three-man crew, we would more likely just open up our main arteries and then we would have to go back and uh, it would be more time consuming, more money spent to, to pull back in these side roads. So it's a win-win situation. Uh, uh, I see no problem with hiring the person and uh, I think uh, we've got to look at it positively. Uh, we haven't been able to do anything for six months. And, uh, and as everybody knows, uh, as we've talked about, uh, uh, we do have options if, uh, uh, I can't imagine uh, that it uh, would go south. Uh, I think that uh, uh, it's in the interest of the town to hire somebody that is knowledgeable and uh, and willing to go to work. Anything else, anybody? I don't mean to impugn uh, in any way any of the individuals involved. To me, it's a matter of principle. Yeah. And, and uh, I'm clearly going to be outvoted on this issue. I have no reason to believe that this person who's been on the playing field um, road crew is going to be anything less than really competent. I just think it's a bad precedent to go back to the days when, when uh, one family was in charge of another member of the family. And, and you're right, in the old days, I just, I just disagree with it. And I think we can tough it out. And uh, hopefully we'll find somebody else. But I don't mean to cast any aspersion on Shane, on Steve, and and whoever, um, whatever the brother-in-law's name is. I want to be clear about that. Okay, thank you, Mary. So um, with all that, I think it's uh, 
I think it's it's decision time. We we previously discussed uh, the terms of the uh, of the hire and what it would be and and uh, what the rate of pay would be. Uh, so I guess the question is, do we direct uh, Victor and Shane to go ahead and and make the offer and hire this gentleman? Yeah, Peter, I, 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 I think we should go with uh, hiring this person. I think that uh, uh, Vic and Shane have both, uh, you know, expressed their feelings and they're the ones that's in their department. And uh, I think this thing can work. So I, I think we should go ahead with that. Okay, so is that is that a motion? Steve? That would be a motion. Yes, it is. Can I, can I ask one question before you move? with that yes, motion. Yes. Are there any other are there any other concessions that have been made or that have that have been discussed other than the rate of pay? Are we are we talking about any any other kind of like sign on bonuses like with these other people or no. or any kind of other adjustments in any of the 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 benefit my, package? My understanding is and correct me correct me if I'm wrong that there are no other just no there's no other concessions. The one other thing I believe that we that we included was, which is permitted by our personnel policies, is based on its experience and qualifications. It's going to get three years, three years, three, three months, weeks. three weeks. Three weeks. <laughs> shows you where my head is tonight. I apologize. Three Ooh. weeks vacation, yeah. but it will accrue. He doesn't get the vacation up front. It accrues per our regular uh, per our regular uh, practice. And it's based on his current level, based on his experience. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yes. Yep. And we've okay. done that before, and I'm sure we'll be doing it again. But yes. Yes. Uh, uh, are you, Sarah. Sarah. Okay. Are you making a motion to waive the... Uh, uh, waive the per this the nepotism section of the personnel policy and, and in order to allow Shane to make this job offer? Yes. Okay, could you just phrase that when you make the motion? I will. Thanks. So I'll make a motion that uh, we allow Shane and Vic to hire this person, to hire Steve McLaren uh, at the well, rate of pay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Isn't, isn't it that we don't want to have the name in our minutes until it actually happens? Oh, that, that, uh, that course has left the barn. Uh -huh. yeah. well, well, I would prefer that it isn't. I would. I would prefer that it is not. Even though we we all now know who the person is, I would prefer that it's not in the minutes until. I I, I think that's just been our practice in the past, hasn't it? Yeah. Especially okay. especially when they're employed. We'll by leave your name time. out. Well, usually uh, we, you don't say the name. Okay. There's some chance I did. You know. There's some chance at the last minute, heaven forbid, that he's going to say, you know what, I've changed my mind, in which case we don't want to screw up his situation with his uh, current employer. So I would just I would just recommend that the motion not say the gentleman's name. That's all. Unless someone disagrees with that. No, nope, that's fine. OK, so go ahead, Steve. <laughs> so that we allow uh, uh, the charm. So that we allow uh, Shane and Vic to hire this person uh, for the rate of pay and the vacation time that we had discussed, and that we waive our nepotism policy to allow that to happen. And I, I think we have to put in there regarding. Um, I would say in in light of uh, the um, difficulty in hiring. Okay. In our inability to hire anyone for this position, I would, I would I would put one just a little line of explanation in there. Yep, that's fine. Sarah, okay. can I just rewrite it to uh, Steve? Move that um, after exhausting all potential candidates, or um, the board will waive this provision in the nepotism policy, thereby allowing Shane and Vic to hire uh, Shane's brother-in-law. I would just say the candidate. 
Well, the candidate, I mean, people are going to say, well, why are you hiring? Why are you waiving the nepotism policy? Right. We we just put it out okay. there. Let's all right. Okay. Transparent. All right. I'm I'm good with that. I mean, the but other I, thing I would also say, is say not only... this one time, like we'll or else you could say this one time, and should you make it like uh, instead of a brother-in-law, just make a uh, a relative by marriage? How about that? Sure. Yeah. I like that better. Yeah. Okay. And I would also say exhaustive search of all candidates and potential subcontractors. Yes, and that we offer jobs too. Remember, <laughs> we did offer jobs, and people turned them down. Right. Yeah, well, it doesn't need to be in the motion, I don't think, Liz. I mean, we're saying difficulty. That's included in the difficulty. Yeah. Okay, so we need a second to that motion. Second. Phil. Okay. Any further discussion, anyone? Okay, so with that, we're going to vote on the motion. You want to read it to us, Sarah, what you have, please? Having Steve moved, Phil seconded, having conducted the town, having conducted a six month exhaustive search of candidates for the to replace a retiring member of the road crew. And after consulting private contractors and finding no one, the board uh, will waive a provision of its nepotism policy, will waive the nepotism clause of its personnel policy in order to allow Shane to hire a relative by marriage where they discuss benefits and pay for the road crew, something like that. How's that? Thank you. That sounds good. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Okay, all in favor of that motion, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Mary opposes. So it is four to one and the motion passes. Thank you all very much for all your time and attention. Um, so boys, go, go get them, as they say, please get back to us. Hope he wants the job. <laughs> yeah, hope so. I won't let you down, guys. Don't worry. I know most of you don't know me that well, but you don't have to worry. Okay. Thanks, Shane. I appreciate it. And you'll, you'll let us know after you talk to him, please. Yes. Okay. And thank you. I just wanted to say thank you guys for doing the search of calling all the contractors. Yeah because I felt like that was a really important step that we needed to take. And I'm glad that you did it. So thank you for doing that. And I would, I would also make that based on the, on the people I, I talked to, everybody couldn't have been nicer. And I really think if we are ever in an emergency situation, they, were, they, will, uh, they will rise up and help us out. So that's the good news. Because we could still have, I mean, if we had two people out sick, we'd be in, uh, we'd be in big time trouble. So yep. anyway. Knock on wood, that won't uh, that won't happen. So, in terms of other uh, other highway issues, we heard about the uh, we heard about the truck, and there is an update on the excavator. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, Charles and I think we fixed it today. Hopefully, knock on wood. We exhausted, we tested it a bunch of different ways. Charles worked it pretty good, and we found where it was leaking. <laughs> There's a couple of fittings that have O-rings in them. We went and found some new fittings. It took us a while, but they don't. Not everyone carries them. But anyway, we fixed it. Charles ran it for a while, and it's still dry. So we're really, really crossing our fingers. That was the problem. Good news. And in terms of other equipment, we're all ready to go for snow. Assuming this truck comes back when it's supposed to. Everything's yeah. in good shape. We just got to put everything on it when it comes back. That won't take too long, and um, it'll be ready for snow. Well, knock on wood, our truck problems abate. They're not; they're ever going to go away. But let's hope they abate. How about that? Yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else from the highway department? No, I think that's nope. it. Okay. Shane says it's going to snow next week. <laughs> it's been snowing at my house all day i know you're lived down in the banana belt victor a couple yeah. hundred feet lower it's been snowing here too trust me <laughs> okay. okay thank you okay so um dorinda we are back to you treasurer's report okay just a couple of quick things um i just wanted to bring up the continued um, bills that we get from RV technology. Um, 
I sent you an example of the recent one. And I personally have a concern when they charge us, you know, for a half hour's time for Amy to sit there and argue with them to get credentials so we can have Nemric come in and perform updates on the software. And, you know, uh, that's one issue. Um, another one was, um, which they charged Shane evidently had a problem with his email on the computer. By the time they got back to him, the email was working. I just think perhaps the internet was down, maybe. I don't know. But again, another 3250 for them to say, oh, okay, the email's back up and running, no problem. Um, and then the other one was they charged us 9750 for a health check for a town of Middlesex reoccurring monthly health check. And I thought that's all part of our, you know, why we've contracted for them to do these monthly, you know, checks. And, you know, and I don't know if it's because we ran over our time and now they have to bill us for that time or what, but there's another hundred bucks. And these bills just like not one month comes through that we're not um, over our contracted amount. Um, in 2020, we spent $8,300. In 2021, we spent $13,560. And so far, we're only four months into it and we're at $5,300. Um, so it just is like bracket creep big time. Well, if, if, if everyone, if everyone remembers, and now that we're, now that we're most of the way through the budget, I think now is the time to have the meeting with Ruben that we previously discussed and go over these, go over these issues. And if we can't get them satisfactory resolved, then we need to engage in a, in a search for a new, uh, new vendor. I, I can just tell you, uh, uh I, I'm not even going to say anything. I know you're frustrated, Dorinda. I understand. And whether it's we're not budgeting enough or we're expecting, uh, I mean, we just need to, we need to clear the air with them, I guess is what I'm saying. Well, I think it goes beyond, I mean, I'm not really talking about a budgeted amount. Certainly we're over it, but I think the things they're charging us for is these passwords belong to the town. There are passwords. And, you know, we should be able to have somebody else go into the system. All the software is not owned by RB technology. And, you know, and it's literally, I heard Amy on the phone with them, you know, just saying, look, you know, we need this password. And he, she finally agreed to chew it up after she finished, you know, talking to him. and got them to set it for that you know day or something i don't know how they got it to work but um this shouldn't be proprietary information well dorinda let's let's hear it from the head man's head man's mouth and then we can then we can make a decision i mean if you don't want to do that then i guess we won't do it but i think that's the first step in this process is to say reuben here are the problems we're having one two three four five and right. Number one, we, we feel strongly that some of these charges are inappropriate. Uh, number two, we don't ever seem to be able to budget the correct, whatever the, whatever the issues are, the passwords, we need an understanding of what the, what the deal is on the passwords. Et cetera. I, that's why I'm bringing it to your attention because I don't think just by signing off on the bills every week that that is apparent what's happening. So that's I why I, I'm I, bringing I it up. That, but I think, you know, I did have, I did have that conversation with Ruben. He agreed to come and I said I would get back in touch with him after, after budget time, which I will now do and arrange to have him come. And I guess what I would suggest, and I'm willing to have it happen at a full select board meeting, but what I would suggest is to start out with that maybe Sarah, Dorinda and I meet with him and then report back to the select board. And then if we want to go farther than that, we can we can do that, or we can invite him to a to a uh, come to Jesus meeting with the whole select board, whatever your pleasure is. Okay. 
Um, and the other thing is, whoa, 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 whoa. So what are we going to do, select board? How do you want to handle this? I like Justin. I think Dorinda and Sarah um, and you should meet with Ruben. Yeah, agreed. Well, that's the sense. That's the sense of the board. Liz, you agree with that? Did we lose Liz? No, Liz and Charlie there. There you go. Oh, she's giving me the thumbs up. Give me okay. the thumbs up. I'm on mute. Okay. okay. All right. So I will uh, I will make that call to Rinda and I'll report back to you. Okay. Okay. On the other thing, two weeks ago, I think I sent you a copy of the audit report. I just need approval to, um, I'm sure you all read it cover to cover. Um, of course. So I, I just need approval that you pass on to Bonnie so she can print the final copies. Is there a motion to approve the audit as presented? I'll make that. Want to have, I think we decided that we didn't want to have them come in and present it, didn't we? Right. Yeah. I'll second it. Okay, so I'm sorry, who made the motion? Steve. I did, Peter. Steve, okay. And Liz seconded. So all those in favor of uh, approving and the audit as well. I did. I didn't review it. Was there any problems, Dorinda, that were discovered when they did the audit? No problems this year. Oh. She said we did a good job. Yay. <laughs> yep. So, good job, um, Madam Treasurer. Yeah. Okay, no. Nope. So, so all good. With that, with that, we need to uh, vote on the motion. So all those in favor, please say okay. aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Liz, where are you? We lost you again. I'm right here. But you got to say I or raise your hand. I am. I'm saying I am muted. Thank you. Thank you. Any opposed? Stop scratching your cat and pay attention. I'm paying attention. I'm right here. Okay. All right. So it is unanimous, I believe. Is there anybody opposed? Okay. You're good, Dorinda. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And that is truly good news after the issues we had uh, we had last yeah. year. Yeah. I can't even remember the issues we had last year. Well, what were suffice it to say they were substantial, not not serious issues, but annoying issues in terms of dealing with the auditor more than anything yeah. else. Mm. Yes, Sarah. Oh, thank you. Uh, when you get to the next item, would you mind passing over the November 9th special minutes, uh, special meeting minutes, so that I can redo them to include the motions, et cetera? Yes. Yep. Thank you. Move approval of the November 2nd minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, and we need to approve Sarah Berger's nomination to be Lister until March of 2022 town meeting action likely. Is there a motion? So moved. How, how did we talk her into it? She's here on the phone. She can tell She's us. Right here. Here she is. Sarah, how did we talk you into it? Oh, Sarah, Sarah Merriman twisted my arm. Um, and apologies <laughs> for the noise in the background. My dog is chewing on a bone. <laughs> thank you for offering to do it. Yeah. We yeah, thank you, Sarah. Sarah. Okay, so we did have a motion in a second. You got that, Sarah? No, I only have the uh, Phil moved. Who seconded? Uh, I'll second. Okay. Liz seconds. Liz seconds or Mary seconds. Yep. Charlie seconds. Charlie seconds. Yeah. Oh, about that's... Skipper? We lost Skipper. <laughs> there okay. Is... All, in, all in favor of the motion appointing uh, our new lister. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Sarah, you're in. Congratulations. Yay, Sarah. Thank you. Great. Thank you guys so much. Thank I'll, you, um, Sarah Merriman, I'll follow up with you about next steps. Okay. Have a good night. Okay, Thank, you. Thank you. Bye. Thanks for coming. Thank you. And we uh, need a motion on the renewal of the filling stations uh, yep. third class liquor license. Action likely. Is there a motion? I'll make yep. the motion. Oh, I'll second. Okay. Steve and Mary. All those in favor of renewing the filling station liquor license, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Peter Sarah Harris. Harris. And I've already I have already signed it in anticipation of uh me too. <laughs> Steve, me too. did you since you're in the area, would you mind coming by or Phil tomorrow? I've got it right out there. Just sign it. So I did their liquor license is weirdly on a six month schedule. No one understands it. They've got a seasonal liquor license. So theirs expired October 31st. I'm going to get this to DLC as soon as I possibly can. So if one of you guys could sign it, that'll be a majority and would be fine. I okay. can stop in. Thank you. Yeah. I've got to stop in to sign warrants anyway. So great. Perfect. Any of us. Yeah. Okay, so the so the next item on the agenda is considering this declaration to declare eleven eighteen as a national injury prevention day action likely. Uh, we received a letter from a new resident in town who happens to be Liz's neighbor, of all things, uh, who was apparently the representative who was charged with. Uh, going around and asking towns to approve this resolution. Uh, I would just make the comment that in the past, we have been reluctant to uh, approve any of these resol resolutions that come in in this, in this way and manner. And uh, we, received, we received a letter uh, from the president of our fire department who was against it. I had a conversation with, with uh, Vic Dwyer. Uh, he is against it. I just, I just don't like the idea. I mean, I don't know what the, the purpose, the ultimate purpose of this resolution is, but uh, I certainly support safety for our kids, but I, I just don't think it's the right thing for the town to do, but I don't know how everybody else feels. I'm against it totally. Could we hear from the people who um, are here to talk about it? Yes. I think Allie is here and Mary Kays, are you here? And yes. who's the person on the iPhone? You're muted. Allie, no. You're still muted, we can't hear you. Not me on the iPhone, but I can I can go ahead and get started um, since I was the one who sent it in. Um, and I just want to say thanks. I know it was really late notice. Um, I recently joined as a and I kind of wear two hats in this situation. I am a volunteer with Moms Doing an Action. I also work for the health department doing injury prevention work. Um, and so that was um, part of the impetus for sending this in. I know that not all towns want to do a proclamation for every sort of day because there's lots of different days that you could have proclamations on um but you know the main reason that we were sending it out um is because we are not only in vermont but across the country um gun injuries are a huge issue and this is not um accidental injuries and this doesn't have to do with um, taking away people's guns or, or trying to get people to um, give up their guns, but really just trying to educate people about safe storage methods. Um, and even in Vermont, um, I know that I'd seen the email from the fire chief and that he hadn't personally experienced it. Um, but in Vermont, 68% uh, of our firearm injuries are due to accidents. Um, and while some of um, the highest rate is among ages 25 to 44, but the second highest rate is between ages 15 to 24. So that is generally youth, if you think um, under 18. Um, and these are, I'll just note that it's not suicide or homicide attempts, but they're accidents. Um, so that's things like playing around with a gun, a gun's loaded, but they don't realize it's loaded. Um, and then even hunting accidents. Um, and then there's also issues with reporting. So these are all injuries that come into the hospital um, so that it's likely that there's probably injuries in there that we're not even able to capture. Um, so really the, this is just the, the proclamation is here to build on safety, um, to increase education about safety, to get people more aware. Um, and, and this is the proclamation is just a guide. It's not, it doesn't have to be word for word. You know, I know that there's hesitance because it might be the every town um, component, but I don't think that is completely necessary. I think the main component is is the injury prevention day component and trying to get more folks 
to recognize that um, the importance of storing their um, firearms safely because we do have um, a pretty high rate of gun ownership as most of us know. Um, over 40% of people in our state own guns or 40% of households. Um, and so really safe storage is hugely important because we, we don't want kids getting hurt. Um, and even if, and we're a small state, right? So even if you don't know somebody that has, this is, this is happening um, by proof of our data. So I just wanted to, to offer this up. Um, and if, even if we don't accept the proclamation, I just want us to maybe even be thinking about it in terms of our state and our community. Thanks. So Ali, I, I have a question, uh, Peter Hood. Um, so what? So let's so let's say we, we do adopt the proclamation, and this and this day is is Middlesex, whatever the right word is, day. And what's where does this go from here? What's what's the next step in the process? I mean, are you going to be proposing legislation to deal with this? Are you going to be proposing regulations to deal with this? What's the next step? No, no, not so much in terms of, and maybe Mary Kay can help me answer that. With this proclamation, the idea is to wear, excuse me, raise awareness and promote efforts um, around the Be Smart campaign. And that campaign is just around teaching people how to store their firearms correctly. Um, and that's really the, the basis of it. Uh, Mary, Mary, did you have anything else? Uh, no, I didn't have anything else to add except that safe storage is a a uh, initiative of the um, uh, gun owners groups as well. Safe storage is not a controversial subject, and and the idea that this is the camel's nose in the tent is. Um, it's like a box. It's 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 like thinking that there's a boogeyman out there or something. This is about kids, and not about individual adult rights. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just right. about storage, and it's a safe storage a subject that all organized groups, including gun owner groups, are are promoting safe storage. So it's not controversial. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Mary Kate, hi, I'm Sarah Merriman. I'm the select board assistant. I'm taking the minutes. Could you please- Hi, I'm- See, I just need your name and what town you're Yes, from. my name is Mary Kay. Yep, my first name is Mary. My middle name is Kay. My last name is Shernock, spelled S-H-E-R-N as in Nancy, O-C-K. And I live in Northfield. I live in Northfield Falls for 36 okay. years. And do you spell your first name Mary, like Merry Christmas? Yep. Okay. All my life. All right, thank you. Thank you, ladies. So, uh, what's your pleasure, Select Board? Yeah, Phil. I just have a, a question. I'm, I'm just looking at the agenda item and it's saying National Injury Prevention Day. So if it's a national day, Well, we lost him. Yeah, well, I lost my internet again. He'll likely be, he'll likely be back. This is our wonderful, did did uh, the iPhone person want to say something? They had been yeah. muted and were trying to talk. I can't see who that is. It's Tammy Picard. Okay, I thought it was you, Tammy. I, sorry, I just haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I just wanted to voice my opinion. Because this is where things start little... And although people say, oh, it's not going to go farther, it does. So I'm here just to say I'm totally against it. Um, we have people in many towns, every town that goes back generation to generation. This is a right. And, uh, you know, we need to protect people. You know, I realize they're protecting people, but there's probably just as many that want to protect it the other way. So I'm against it. <laughs> Other members of the select board? I'm not against it. I have no problems signing a pro having Middlesex sign a proclamation um, for keeping children safe by 
making sure people properly store their guns. I mean, I, I don't think it has, any, to me, it has nothing to do with gun owners' rights, except I guess maybe, you know, what some people may say is, well, I want to protect myself, so I keep my gun loaded next to my bed, um, which, you know, I think probably studies show that people don't necessarily protect themselves when they are doing that, but I can't say that. So anyway, I personally have no problems with saying that people should store their guns properly to protect children. From getting There's only guns. Liz? Yes. Do you own a gun? I do not own a gun. Yeah, I don't. Well, that. <clears throat> This is about sex. That has nothing this... to do with, with why I feel this way. I, I personally, you know, I. I That's fine. That's fine. Took, I felt That's like fine. I did not. People need to keep their guns safely so that guns are not getting in the hands of the wrong people. This is a Second Amendment issue. No, it's. No. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. A Second Amendment issue. And these people right here are not doing anything but pulling the wool over your eyes. Yeah. This is a movement. This is a movement nationwide. And well, I am for the movement they, then. Let me speak, please. They are. They even say they're with every town. They're with Mike Bloomberg. And their whole idea is to take away our Second Amendment rights. Liz, how do you pretend to even imagine... Not only a gun, we're not that naive. If my gun is locked up in one room and my other one's locked, my ammunition's locked up in another, how do I protect myself? How do I, I, I don't know who you're protecting yourself from, but I, 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 Vic, you and I are never going to agree on this. I'm just that's just right, that's right, but that that's I have right. no problems with it. That's right, we're probably not going to agree on it, but you're doing a great disservice to many people in this town by signing on to this. And it's not funny. It's not I'm not, it's I'm not laughing. laughing. I am not you laughing. Are laughing. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down, please. Please, please, please. Randy. But it is these people are doing nothing but they're they're trying to, to take away uh, to to eliminate either amendment from, either. from the US hey, Constitution. Hold on. Well, wait a minute. Look. We gotta let let Victor speak, and then I'll recognize you, Mary, and anybody else who wants to be recognized. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let Mary Dr. speak. Randy. Hold on. Go ahead, let, Victor. No, go ahead. Let he, Mary speak. Steve was ahead. He wanted to say something. I'm sorry, Mary. Steve was ahead of me. He had his hand up before. Look, I'm gonna try and recognize. We had we had lots of hands up. Yeah. I'm happy to hear from Steve first, Randy second, you third, Mary. Please go ahead, Steve. <laughs> I, I, my comment is that, that I agree with what Vic is saying. I, I, and I also agree that with gun safety, uh, people taking care of their stuff, but we don't need a declaration in our town to take, to have that to happen. And you don't need to have that in our town for them to teach or promote safety. You can do that without us having a proclamation. Randy. You're muted, Randy. Uh, Steve touched on some areas that I was going to touch on. Um, as a gun owner, uh, you know, it's my responsibility to teach gun safety to my children, those around me. Uh, I don't believe that the town needs a proclamation to, to make that happen. Um, it, it's part of being a responsible gun owner. Um, I, I, think that we need to, you know, the select board, you know, um, while everybody has their own personal opinions, think about the town folks and, and you know, the, the stance that the town folks would, would take and, and let's look at this um, uh, in, a, in a reasonable sense. I, I, I'm in total disagreement with, with trying to push this forward um, and, and Again, I don't believe that that we need to sign a proclamation to recognize that we need to teach gun safety to those around us. And as a gun owner, that's my responsibility to to deal with, you know, with my children and whatnot. And that's I'll leave it at that. Okay, thank you, Dorinda. 
Um, I just want to say that I think gun safety is important 365 days a year, not just one day that's named gun safety day. And we've had guns in our house, my house for 45 years. I've raised two children. I have two grandchildren who are here daily and um, there's not an issue. I think we should be concerned about bigger things than naming one day a year a safety day. I agree with gun safety. I agree with, uh, with what Dorinda has said, um, but I go back to what you said either when we started, which is that don't normally take a position on on uh, petitions like this that come in that ask us to join for a group or against a group. And in the past, we have uh, not done so. And in that light, I'm going to move we pass over this um, pass over this request. Okay, uh, that's a motion, Mary. It is. Okay, is there a second to that motion? I'll second that. Okay, any further uh, any further discussion? Anyone? Okay, so all those in favor of uh, passing over the uh, pass over the excuse me. I'm sorry, we're getting some cross talk here. All those in favor of, of passing over this request, denying this request, uh, please say oh, aye. I'm denying it. It's over. We're not saying yes, we're not saying no. We're passing over it. All right. We're, I'll, I'll restate that. We're, we're passing over this. We're not saying yes and we're not saying no. Does everyone understand that? Does anybody have any questions about that? Okay. So uh, that is okay. a motion to close and second to pass over this request. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. I don't Liz. think Phil's here. Yeah, we lost, we lost Phil. Oh, Phil. Um, so it's 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 three to one in favor of passing over. So we are passing over this request. Ladies, I do appreciate you uh, appreciate you reaching out to us. As I as I said in the beginning, uh, this is as much about what our town practice has been. I think we're all in favor of uh, of gun gun safety that's not an issue it's just we don't think this is the way to go about it at this time so thank you very much thank you for having us appreciate okay, it tonight. um first one i have my i have my other business um that i need to talk about okay well, we're not at the end yet oh not there yet of course, I don't have the agenda. I only have my area. iPad in front of me. I don't have the agenda in front of me. Okay. Any correspondence, Sarah? Yes, I have one bit of correspondence, really fast. Um, the Winooski Basin Water Quality Council is looking for a uh, representative. If anyone is interested in joining, um, they are. There are 49 municipalities in the Winooski Basin. Apparently, we're one of them. And if you do uh, know of anyone who would be keen to, who knows about clean water topics, blah, 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 all that stuff, if you want to go in, if you want to, uh, if you want to push this for them, or if one of you wants to join, you may. I have the application right here. It was sent to the select board. Yeah, I also, I also received oh, that directly. You. <laughs> I would I would suggest that maybe we put it out on front porch forum and see if anyone is uh, is interested. And I would also uh, ask you to uh, put out a note of interest about the whatever that police yep. liaison committee's name is. Yep. For okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, and Dorinda, you've got enough signatures on your orders. Um, I think yeah. when I left, I had two. Uh, Mary came in and made it three, right? Yeah. Peter came in. Yep. Oh, so yeah, we got enough then. Yep. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Liz, any <laughs> other <laughs> item? No. Oh, yes. Um, so tomorrow, I'm sorry, not tomorrow, Thursday. Thursday. 
Thursday, you're all cordially invited to the public input meeting of the uh, capital spending plan committee and where we have um, what we've done over the last eight months. So Peter and I have been on that committee, but a lot of you, Randy has as well, um, but a lot of you um, haven't sort of seen exactly, you know, Phil and uh, Mary in particular, um, and Shane and, and Vic as well. Um, it, it would behoove you to, um, to attend if you're able to, um, because we're gonna talk about uh, the process um, that we went through, as well as um, how, uh, you know, what the, the, um, the documents that we came up with um, that include, you know, sort of a budget uh, capital uh, expenditure plan, as well as a process by which how um, we as townspeople who need to purchase uh, large expenditures, how we would go through the process of including um, an item in a capital spending plan. Um, so the, the meeting is, is actually gonna be probably a half an hour to 40 minutes of a presentation and then 40 to 45 minutes of questions. Um, but one of the things, the reason that I'm, I'm actually asking tonight is that one of the you know, questions that may come up from people who attend the meeting is, well, what are we going to do about the town hall and the town garage, right? Um, and and that's not really what this process was um, in terms of we didn't, this, this was not about how uh, do we um, repair or replace the town hall and the town shed. It was really about inventory collection, costs of things, replacement times and replacement amounts. Um, so that as a town, you can better plan um, over a period of time. However, what, what, we, what came out of this committee um, was uh, the, um, the need for um, forming um, a committee probably out of the select board um, that, would, uh, that would actually go through probably um, a scoping study of, um, of determining over this next year um, the various scenarios of um, the future of the town hall and the town garage. Um, and so what I wanted to get from, from the select board was sort of an endorsement that yes, you believe that, that that's necessary, that, that we as a select board um, form a committee or perhaps um, appoint a committee of people to, um, to, to go forward with that. Um, so just in a nutshell, what we're, you know, what this committee would be doing would be, um, would be looking at many things, like looking at the existing town hall, um, everything from doing sort of minor repairs that get us through the next five years to major overhaul um, and refurbishment of the town hall to selling the town hall and and building a new town hall on different property um, or purchasing an existing property that may exist in Middlesex that would meet the needs of the town hall. Um, perhaps, uh, you know, joining the town hall and the, um, the town shed into one location um, and, and anywhere in between. So, so we believe that it's important on this budget committee, what came out of this was that, yes, you know, it seems uh, that that's the logical next step. But before I announce that in a public meeting, I wanted to gauge from the select board whether or not they agree that that, that would be the logical next step. And I believe it would require um, either looking for grant funding from like Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission or money to actually perform because you, we're going to need engineers, right? This is this is if you're looking at the building, it's going to be engineering, um, structural, e electrical, plumbing, all of those those things that need to be evaluated before we can make an educated decision on what the next steps are. Um, in a ballpark figure, um, uh, Christian had reached out to Du Bois and King, and they were. 
they quoted five to 8,000 just to do an engineering study on the town hall. So we believe it will take some money, um, but we may be able to also, you know, get some, uh, you know, donated time from experts within the town to help us with that or hire a smaller, you know, firm, a one person, you know, show to, to do that. But anyway, that's what I'm asking is, does this, is this something the select board agrees is a good next step? I don't think we have to vote on it, but. Well, I, I have a question. I just want to have members of the select board or is this going to be another group that includes people from the town? Um, I think, you know, probably out of the interest of, uh, of bandwidth and, and getting some expertise that we would reach out to people on the town, you know, who have expertise that may want to help us with this, um, but also have members of the select board. My comment would be that I think we need maybe it, certainly a minimum of one, maybe two people from the select board, but that this would be a community, uh, a community committee, much like the uh, planning uh, committees that we've had over the years for additions and improvements at the school, the same kind of same kind of process. Uh, not that the whole select board would be involved in it. Would it be similar to what you and Liz have been doing up until now? No, I think it's a different process. This it's is a totally different this process. Is specific, this is a specific project. The, 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 the problem is the capital planning project is looking ahead into the future. These are things we need to be doing now, urgent. And this gets put into a capital plan, right? That this is like, you know, before something gets put into the capital plan, you know, you have to do the and I mean, this would be a town vote, right? I mean, this isn't anything that that we as a select board would decide I, that we're going to like build a new town hall. Um, but but before we can pre present to voters options, we need to know what those options are. So I think I think the process would be, and again, I'm I'm thinking about how the school process went. That this committee would do the legwork, compile the information, make a recommendation to the select board. The select board would say yes, we like your recommendation or we want to change it this way or that way or the other, and then it would be presented to the voters. That's the way I see it going. I think it's a good idea. I think it's something that we, has been a long time coming and I support it. Dorinda. Will there be any impact on FY23 budget, do you think? Un, undetermined at this point in time, yeah. I would say. I, I think that there probably would be with that engineering study because if, if yep. and I don't know if Dubois and King, if they were that six to $8,000 was just for, you know, a, a study of the existing town hall. That's all that, it was. Right. I was going to say there's probably a, a significantly higher cost when you start evaluating properties for new buildings or other existing properties and what the potential construction right. costs might be and whatnot. So, I mean, really it's a feasibility study of, of, yep you know, this process and, and that, that $8,000 really could be, you know, a $30,000 number um, right. by the time you factor all of that in. Well, and Du Bois and King said that they thought that, that this could be done by like a, you know, sort of a one person show, like some, you know, a consultant that does this kind of work that um, wouldn't necessarily have to be um, done through somebody like them. Um, and, uh, but yes, you're right. And I, and I also believe that there are, it, it, unless the, um, unless the planning commission has used up all our grants with their sidewalks, but there usually is money like in the central Vermont, you know, when you, through these grants, um, for, for this specific kind of thing. Right. Um, so I'm going to look into that, but if, if we didn't get a grant, you know, I think you're right, Randy, we'd be probably talking anywhere between 10 to $20,000. Um, but also, you know, using some of the expertise of the of the townspeople that we already have, like Ray Hill might be able to help us out with some things, um, you know, at a cheap cost or for free. Um, but I think that that we've we've done a lot of talking about this for years, and it's and it really is this this capital spending plan. I think has driven us to that next level of, you know, we have to address some of the crucial things about the town hall, 
Um, and, and so, you know, we really should be doing a greater study of the town hall. Steve? Steve, did you have any comments? No. Okay. no. We'll need to increase our budget match, I, our uh, grant right. match money significantly. <laughs> Probably. Because we only put a thousand bucks in there. Did, did you guys- Yeah, what was the, it was like a 10% match for the um, Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. I think it was a $9,000 grant. And it, that's where we that got, from. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, did you guys ever meet with that? Uh, I forget the name of the person, but the person that was going to talk about um, the way that you have, that you're able to use the money that was provided down, uh, I think it was the SRF money or something like that, and, and how that how that impacts like what you're looking at with the town hall and, and the impacts of COVID on this and whatnot is, is would something like this be allowed to, to tie into the study of the existing town hall and what would need to be um, done there to make it a more uh, usable structure within the confinements of, of COVID and whatnot? Mm -hmm. I mean, would this be allowed as part of that? You're, you're talking about the, the, the ARPA money that uh, the towns have gotten, right? Um, yeah, we, we got, I forget what the numbers were, but you guys at one point had talked about talking with somebody further about you know, being yes, more creative can. with the use of these. And I, I didn't attend yeah. that, but um, I don't know if this, this, at least the small piece of focusing on the town hall, the existing town hall, if that might fall within, mm -hmm. within any, any of that. So. Yeah, it, it, I think it might be a stretch, Randy, but I think that, you know, if there's, you know, we'd have to look at the fine fine print to see if like there could be some case of like air quality right and and that you know in order for us to do a full thing we'd have to do a whole engineering study right? yeah I mean it's I, I again I'm always just trying to right. think outside of the box and if there's this money that's available and we can get it yeah even if yeah. it's no, just, even if it's just partially covering some of the cost I mean it's it's it'd be a shame not to not to utilize it if we could yeah, I agree. I agree. Also, I, I, you know, the 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 problem is the problem is just so everyone in, understands, we want to know what to say at this meeting on Thursday. So if if the board is uncomfortable with us talking about this potential committee, we can defer we can defer that suggestion. But I think the idea was that we wanted to be able to say to the community attending this meeting. But the plan was to establish this committee with representatives from the select board and, and residents of the town who are interested to explore this. And explore it means, you know, what information do we need to gather? How much is it going to cost to gather that in that information? And it's going to be an incremental process. It's a little awkward. It's good in a way because we're right in the middle of budget time. So if we need to put in a couple of thousand dollars for for grant match to cover us, um, that's probably a good idea. I am not in favor of, of, of putting a number in the budget of twenty thousand dollars before we've even, before we've even formed the committee. But I don't disagree with Dorinda. If if the if the sense is to form the committee, I think it at least makes sense to put a little more money in grant match just to have us covered on that front if that's the way we go forward. But this is the this is the start of a process. It's not the not the end of the process by any stretch. So. You know, is it a potential to, to spend money in, in uh, the next fiscal year? I would say definitely there is, but we're not there yet. Bye. So really all we're looking for I, is the sense of the board that forming this committee makes, makes sense to you. I think it's a good idea. So there you have it. There's four of us and we got good so idea. Yeah. Okay. All right. I just, I just want to be. Uh, we just want to be uh, transparent and want to be sure we say the right thing on Thursday night. And I would encourage, I would encourage uh, any of you who have the time and are available to uh, to zoom in and and get up to speed on this. We have done a, a lot of work, and we're 
we're trying to address. Are you the, send us a Zoom connection? Well, you'll send us a Zoom connection. Correct? I thought I I thought I invited you all. Yes, well, you I did. okay. Did I you, you? But there was a Zoom. Okay. Yes. There should be yes. Zoom. Is there a Zoom, Steve? Yeah. I just remember getting the invitation. I didn't look to see if there was a Zoom on there. There should be a Zoom link right in there, and if there's not, Mary, there should. It's on the website. Uh, Sarah, on page the website. The if there's a problem, I'll just have Sarah send me <laughs> again. There's, there's probably five of them on front page, front right. porch forum. Yeah. <laughs> Randy and I double double advertised. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> Nothing wrong with well, that. Hey guys, it's been a it has been a long, a long, long and busy meeting tonight, and I, I for one, have uh, had enough. I appreciate everybody's time and attention. We hope we'll have uh, good news from Shane tomorrow, and we can. Dorinda's going to send us updated budget numbers. We do need to be, we do need to think and be thinking about what that what that percentage would be, because by uh, by December we need to be. Uh, we be, need to be finalized. I guess actually not by December, by January, right, Sarah? By January. We need to be finalizing our mm. budget, and we need that number to do that. Oh, and Sarah, I'm uh, Peter and I are coming to the office tomorrow for six o'clock because I said there would be a person at the town hall. Why well, you keep saying tomorrow? Don't you mean Thursday? I Thursday. know. I keep thinking tomorrow's Thursday. I'm sorry. I meant at, yeah, at, Thursday. Cats made you. Uh... <laughs> well, Peter had. <laughs> Both, don't Not, you, you guys both have uh you guys both have keys, right? Well, I have some key in my purse and I don't know what it is. And I'm thinking I definitely I definitely have a key and I'll be there. So yeah. all right. Well if you don't have a key, just let me know. No, uh, I, I definitely have a key. He's gonna Sarah, meet me there. Meet there speaking alone. of, um the budget committee has a meeting on the 30th, and I've been asked to uh be down at the town hall. So I don't know what what Buddy. kind of time frame you're there in but i may 30th, need to connect my with book you. is coming out i am not here i'm going to be in plainville massachusetts and i'm going to be off because it's eight o'clock <laughs> don't worry okay. we'll be in touch we'll work on it are we yeah. in randy you can borrow my key there you go oh, okay. I've got a key. you guys I've done got a key, randy i gotta go guys bye-bye hey, bye